<laughs> very unnecessary it's to introduce so, monkey aliens. So into many. It. They yeah. never do anything. No, unrelated. The monkey aliens never come back. I kept. I was waiting the whole time for the monkey aliens to show up in a banana ship and to shoot the yes, fucking reptilian something. at the end or something. They never come back. It turns out it's Diddy Kong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because I'm too lazy to rewrite this intro. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath will be unable to join us today, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm fantastic, Noah. Pineapples, lizards, destruction of the universe. All right. Well, that's not going to make more sense later, but that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> We're not going to be doing sense today. <laughs> We're also excited to welcome back returning gas masochists and only podcasters with a shittier subject matter than us, Dan and Jordan from the Knowledge Fight Podcast. Dan, Jordan, welcome back. Hey, Hello. thanks for having us. Sort of. Yeah, yeah, right, right. You thank me now, but uh, yeah. very, very conditionally. Uh, thank you. <laughs> non plus, non plus by the intro. Non plus. <laughs> You're saying a totally different thing that ended in k you about me earlier. I know that you were. So, and to explain that, tell us, Eli, what will we be breaking down today? We watched the Laws of the Universe, Part Zero. It's the story of the acid kicking in as you read a manga comic. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That's fair. <laughs> and Dan and or Jordan, how bad was this movie? Um, How bad was this movie is a little bit like asking how deep is the Mariana Trench? Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> if you're, you're not measuring it against other deep things. You're only measuring it against the concept of depth. <laughs> <laughs> If that makes sense <laughs> no, to you. No, that's totally fair. <laughs> so now, were you guys at all familiar with the happy science cult going into this, or is this your first foray? I think I might have been more aware of it than I thought. I don't think I knew of it as a specific cult, but boy, a lot of these ideas I have heard. <laughs> yes, they're yeah. familiar. Yes. <laughs> In various, like, conspiracy and paranormal like blogs and message boards that I used to I would read, and Project Camelot oh, stuff. Oh, totally. Like, there's yeah. a ton of overlap between... Oh. Oh, I knew I, I, all the main characters before yeah, when the right, main yeah. characters started showing up. I was like, oh, I know him. Oh, I, know I think her. she was kidnapped by the monkey aliens. Yep, the monkey <laughs> aliens. Yep. The monkey aliens were actually a surprise. <laughs> that that they, okay, all right. Let's see. I was expecting mercantile dogs. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> there were no dog or cat aliens. No, no, no. no cat aliens at all. Yep. Uh, do, uh, there are sequels. There are sequels. This is just part zero. There aren't many people I can relate to about this, but I'm glad that you shared the moment I have so often where I recognize a terrible thing from my very niche job. And then I have this moment <laughs> where I'm like, hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> I yep. see the reptilians again. <laughs> I was getting mad. Like, why aren't these reptiles mad about chocolate? I really thought someone was going to eat some chocolate yeah. sooner or later. Uh, shouldn't they be antiquing? <laughs> <laughs> Again, this is only part zero. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Maybe the best worst flashback to ideas that I might have fallen for back when I used to smoke weed now, a lot. Sure. Uh, all right. sure. That's sad. Yeah. For me, it's uh, the best worst piece of evidence ever, which is <laughs> this moon rock that cannot be verified one way or the other. And is missing. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> We've got this moon rock. Everyone will believe us now. Only NASA and other scientists have these. <laughs> yes. <laughs> No, that it, that proves the existence of the moon, bro. Exactly. So we all agree. Yeah. I, so I was going to go with best, worst moral of the story. Now, the moral of the story is that you should join this fucking cult. But if you don't know that the cult exists, if you just happen upon this or whatever, the moral of this story is think twice before accepting a super genius brain implant ship from space aliens. Because, you know, <laughs> they could have ulterior motives. They could be Jewish. <laughs> 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 I can no longer be associated with this show. I mean, I'm to... <laughs> I was going to go with best worst villain clapback. It's <laughs> really late in the movie, but towards the end, they're like, don't you see your mission is pointless. And the villain is basically like, 
I mean, I'm the bad guy in the movie. I'm already here. Yeah. Really- <laughs> hey, what else are you going to do? I got two more monologues here that I haven't got through yet. <laughs> I'm surprised that Kenny Loggins song that uh, they say it's a hopeless fight, but I say I gotta try didn't kick in like yeah. so musical. No- this thing has musical numbers. Yeah, it, sure it did does. have a yeah. musical number. All right, well I'll tell you what. When you're dealing with this much crazy, you need a buffer. So we're gonna pause for a quick break. But when we come back, we'll flash out all the random insanity of the laws of the universe, part zero. Okay, what did you want to show me? Ta-da! You, what, what did you do to your teeth? I had them steel coated. Ain't no Christmas cookie going to give me a cavity this year. I mean, seriously, dude? Yeah, man. Last night I walked by Lucinda's office and she was just mumbling the words October fudge over and over her cookie book. This is a must for me. I mean, Eli, if you want to take better care of your oral health this holiday season, why don't you just try products from Quip? The electric toothbrush people? Exactly. The Quip electric toothbrush is loved by over 7 million mouths. It's got a lightweight and sleek design for adults and kids with no wires or bulky charger to weigh you down. And it's got timed sonic vibrations with 30-second pulses to guide the dentist-recommended two-minute clean. Ooh. And it's not just a brush. In addition to brush heads, Quip also delivers fresh floss, toothpaste, mouthwash, and gum refills every three months from $5. Shipping is free, so you can save money and skip the hustle and bustle of shopping in-store during the holidays and into the new year. Quip is running their best deal of the year, which means you won't be paying through the teeth when you get better oral health this year. I see what you did there. All right, Noah, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? If you go to getquip.com slash awful right now, on top of their holiday savings, you're going to get your first refill free. That's right, first refill free and up to 40% off bundles at getquip.com slash awful, spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash awful. Quip, the good habits company. Nice. Eh, I guess I didn't need these steel chompers after all. Where did you find somebody even willing to do that? Oh, I, I live in New Jersey. I just told the guy I was a car. And and he believed you? New Jersey, Noah. I live in New Jersey. Oh, right, right. Yep. Guys, thanks so much for coming in. Sure, sure. I mean, I, I've got to be honest. As a popular anime voice actor, I'd never heard of your company before, but I read the script and it's really out there. Yeah, really in-depth lore. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, lore? Yeah, 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 you know, with the aliens and the spirits and the pyramids and the, oh, the no, pentagrams. No, no. no, we should explain. This movie is all true. It, it, it's all true? Yeah. yeah well, I mean, we, we made up the characters, but but that stuff about the Venetians and the reptilians and stuff, that, that's, that's not just true. It's the basis of our entire religion. Yeah. The basis of your religion. Okay. Okay. You know what I just remembered? Uh, I left a dog in my car. I gotta go. Yeah, I left two dogs in my car. I gotta, Ooh, I gotta get out of the, here. The uh, doors are locked from the outside. Okay, so take one. Yeah, let's start on take one. Yeah, absolutely. And we're back for the breakdown. We're gonna open up with a young girl wandering through a forest in the middle of the night when she happens upon a giant purple space laser. Yeah. I wrote Marjorie Taylor Greene was right. <laughs> that gave me a bit of hope right out of the gate. <laughs> it seemed like uh, action. Yeah. Right, right. Little did we know this would have to sustain us for any sci-fi content for the next hour and 15 minutes of the movie. I kept looking to try and find sci-fi content where it wasn't also <laughs> <laughs> because they primed my mind with this purple right, right. space laser at the beginning. I was like, everything's got to have some kind of meaning. What is with this egg sandwich race? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. So we, we, we get her getting zapped up by a purple laser. Then we're going to cut to this college. Well, it's, I, I wrote college dorm at first. Apparently this is like a, prep school for middle schoolers they're supposed to be i don't know the age is very inconsistent in this i took them as high schoolers that made me the most comfortable yeah Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) one of the things that is weirdest about watching the happy science movies is you're not sure what is a happy science craziness and what is just a part of japanese culture that i don't understand as an american yeah right right i had to google like do high schools keep you all year long in Japan? Okay, some of them do. Uh, all right. Yes. This is not a thing they made up. Yeah, I mean, surprisingly enough, I have a fair bit of background with anime. Sure. I figured this might come into play. It's, uh, it's it's available to me when the time comes. So this was actually very, very normal for me. The, the opening of this movie right. where there's a big laser and then there's just a bunch of kids doing boring shit. 
That is 40% of anime. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that is it. And the other 40% has a tentacle penis of some sort and then a bunch of kids doing boring shit. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. That's the old shit. That's that's boring weird. <laughs> now what's weird is that sometimes they play tennis that turns into monsters. That's okay. the type of shit Ooh. that we're at now. We're raising it up another random level. Oh, awesome. <laughs> that's how cool it is, man. I got to get on Jordan's level, man. I'm, I'm on the old Bible black shit. I got to get right. Yeah. Gonna up my game. So now we should be clear about what this movie is too, right? So it's trying to lull you into thinking it's just some normal anime. And it then it like way late in the game, it's just like, no, we we're just kidding. This is a pitch for our weird cult, right? Yeah. So th there is a whole lot of just like, oh, okay, this could be a normal movie still, right? That happens in act one. Yeah, the dramatic tension in Act 1 seems to be, will these kids figure out what project they want to do for the creation fair? Yes. Yep. The I, creation well, class. Well, there was that. Whatever, whatever the fuck creation class is. <laughs> there was that. That was a weird... I wanted to really get to the bottom of these eating contests. Yeah. <laughs> they seem to be having, at, at one point, one of the characters like, says, all I'm you care 40. about. Yeah. All you care about are your eating contests. Yeah. And I was like, what, what world are we living in? Yeah. <laughs> She implied that they'd have more time to study if they yes. didn't spend so much time on their eating contest. So much time on their eating contest. I feel like, Just to, they, like having a speed eating contest gives you more time, not less, right? Yeah, yeah you got to eat. Of course. <laughs> so, yeah, so we're going to meet the kids, the, like the Scooby gang at the center of this. Ray and Tyler, who apparently keep score every morning on who can eat breakfast faster. Ray is up 41 to 40. Mm. And then we also meet Anna and Haley, the love interests for these two. And if you want to be able to tell them apart, Anna is the other one. And Haley's the one who, when she cries, the tears shed outwards from her face like a sprinkler toy you would buy for a child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one goes out there. I at periods thought that Anna was the main character. Yep. <laughs> yeah. For, uh. for stretches of this, I thought maybe she was. I think I was wrong. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. I, I thought Tyler was for a while. It's Ray. Ray is the main character. But yeah, they really they really kind of toy with you on that. I think that's the mark of good storytelling. <laughs> I, I, I appreciated I appreciated Haley's arc. I think she's the unsung hero okay. of this film. All, all right. right. Well, all, we can okay. all have our own hero. Because <laughs> here's what I'm saying. All right. Everything happens much more intensely to Haley. She's our emotional core. Okay. Sure. Okay. If anybody feels bad. Haley is going to let you know. Well, that's because her sister is, you know, has been, a spoiler alert, taken to yeah. cram school. Her sister's been taken to cram school, yes. Or she went to cram it's school. It's not as sexy as I, we're making it sound. Right? I was going to say, yeah, we, we geni genius school, excuse me. Yeah, let's go with genius school. Yeah, so this is Natsumi, who we meet right here, right? Because, like, as they're having their eating contest, some girl passes out in the cafeteria elsewhere, and they're like, oh, it's Natsumi. And we're like, oh, we know her? Okay. Yeah. The boldness with which this movie assumes you know and or care about these characters is breathtaking. <laughs> <laughs> it did feel like maybe this is an existing property. Yeah. yeah. Right, right, yeah. I thought maybe part zero meant that the other parts already existed and this was a prequel right. or something. <laughs> I assumed the same. That's not the case, but yeah. <laughs> wow. I would have uh, I would have checked into it, but I also didn't care. Well, there's yeah. that. Yeah, that's yeah. that helps. Sure. I appreciate throwaway news dialogue in any and all <laughs> movies. I love a good like just one sentence from a newsman on TV. And this has a great one. Where oh, it yeah. just says <laughs> the news guy just says, turns out it was a meteor. And then they move on. We <laughs> yes! thought it was a yes! UFO. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> and then they're like, OK, oh, that's a story of the day. Meteor. <laughs> But yeah, so, it, it, but we really have to, so they go to the nurse, they visit Natsumi, that's Haley's sister. They say it's most likely a little anemia flare up is the throwaway mm -hmm. line that they give us. And then we cut over to, correct me if I'm wrong on this, creation class? <laughs> yeah, I had trouble with that. Yeah. Jordan, is this something from anime? Yeah. No, 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 it is not. No, no creation class. Nobody's okay. just like, hey, this is how we fucking create things, bro. What do you want yes. to create today? <laughs> this class will be at various points, a school presentation, yep. an international science fair and a class. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. And, and I was I was trying to get context clues about like, what does this creation class mean? <laughs> and like one of the other presentations that was given within the context of it is about like 
primate history. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, maybe this is like an evolution class. Is it about or like where creation came from? Yeah. Like the history of creation. <laughs> but then there's also just insane nonsense. I think it's space. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. They, yeah. They'll do their creation class project on UFOs eventually. <laughs> so who the fuck knows? This is also where we have to meet evil, angry teacher. Yeah. Right? Like, they show up from the nurse's office, and he's like, unconscious girl, schmunch, schmunch, girl, you need to be at fucking class on fucking time. Also, stop going to cram school. This is where we introduce that concept. <laughs> yeah. He was really insistent on that. Yeah. yeah. It was it was kind of off-putting. Okay, and look, <laughs> I don't want to unfold the taco too sloppily, but it's going to turn out that he's being mind-controlled by the bad guys who run cram school. Why wouldn't he want them to go to the cram No, school? he's a reformed guy. Yeah. Damn it, Eli. Keep up. He's a reformed <laughs> sloppy <laughs> taco. <laughs> how? How? <laughs> How did you not clearly get the difference between a reformed reptilian and an unreformed yeah, reptilian? Yeah, right, come right. On. Come on, come, come on. Come on. <laughs> That's almost racist. I'm going to be honest with you. No, no, they're both Jewish. I like the introduction of the idea that aliens can be reformed yeah. Yeah. or whatever just comes right at the end for a second and then never ex- yes. explored at and all. It's like, nope. yeah, wow, we should have mentioned that before you murdered like 67 of them in that previous scene, right? Anyway. We'll get there. But yeah, so now we should point out here. So he he introduces the idea of cram school. This will end up being the plot of the fucking movie, right? Sort of. Sometimes. Well, occasionally (laughs) when it decides to have a plot. On on occasion. Well, but also why is it called cram school? Because it's cram school, Dan. (laughs) It's it's called genius school and that makes sense. Well, Mm -hmm. yeah, they give it two different names at the beginning of the movie too. Just like in case we were in danger of not being confused by this script. I thought they were different things for a short time. Yeah, period. for a while. Yeah. Yep. But then I just gave up. Mm-hmm. I just gave up. I'm going to, everything that they named, I basically just said was one of whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Like they might as well have just used Smurf for every name. There you go. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> for sure. I just, I'm just going along with the image. That's what mm-hmm. I got. Okay. So, but the, uh, the Scooby gang has to stay after class and clean up and everything. This is where we introduce a fifth character to their gang. This is Eske. Afro guy. Yeah, he's the comic relief. <laughs> hmm, sort of. <laughs> well, in, that's in, in their minds, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Eventually, he's the victim. Well, right. Yeah. So, <laughs> SK's entire personality is masturbation, right? So we can just yeah. throw that up, uh, out up front. You say that like it's a negative thing, but some of us have made a highly, <laughs> highly popular podcasting career off of it. No illusions. I don't know. <laughs> What SK is, is letting them know is that there's a there's a school where you can go and then you just go to sleep. And when you wake up, you're a genius with photographic memory and you'd get good grades. Right. Yeah. Cool. So then we have a very confusing scene where they expect me to now know what which kid is which. Right. So they send some kids into town and some kids don't go and the heroes are still back at the school. And I thought they were on the fucking bus anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Very confusing. Oh, they were different kids. Yeah. <laughs> oh, completely. I just assumed that they were in both places at the same time. <laughs> I was just like, maybe they're cutting this back and forth. Ah, uh, you know what? They're gonna go quantum at some point. It might as well be now. I zoned out a little bit when I, I was <laughs> uh, probably around this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was watching it, and I'm like, they got school uniforms. But, like, what's the point of a school uniform if you can have your shirt untucked? <laughs> you can have your tie really loose. Is this an anime thing? Yes, that is yeah, an anime absolutely. thing. I, I say tighten that tie and tuck in the oh, shirt. Oh, man. Everybody has to always be wearing a school uniform. And the rebel, oh, his tie is less loose. So than loose. Everybody. All of yeah. them have loose yeah. ties. Yeah, yeah, but his is real loose. Yeah, it's his like is this, the most loose. Super yeah. loose. It's like this school is, is strict enough to require school uniforms. Of course. But permissive enough to be like, Hey, why don't you be rock and roll you about to it? Express yourself, yeah, <laughs> in your uniform, yeah, <laughs> yes. All right, so all the kids are sitting around talking about this project that they have to do, and this is where we learn that Natsumi went to that genius school right before she passed out in the cafeteria the other day, right? Yes. Natsumi, by the way, is girl who cries from all parts of her body's younger sister. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Haley's mm-hmm. little sister, Natsumi, yeah. But they explained that since she went to the genius school, she started walking in her sleep and she's got photographic memory and she is disconnected or whatever. It's probably just anemia. Yeah. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like anemia to me. 
I love too. Like Ray at this point is going like, okay, but that could be good, right? And I'm like, are you just saying that Nasumi was a shitty person and you're glad that she's gone, right? Like, what are you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, but Anna thinks that she knows exactly who they need to talk to. All they need is a secret place to hang out and talk to them. And hey, who's got secret masturbation dens all over the fucking campus? SK. So they go to talk to him. SK. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so excited for SK. <laughs> SK was the only part of this movie I could touch base on because everyone else was identical and talking about various subjects at various times. So every time they referenced SK, I was like, a character who looks different than the other ones, and he's probably talking about jerking off, a thing I understand. <laughs> Oh, I was so upset with myself in my notes at this point. I wrote, so fuck me. SK, Tyler, Ray, Natsumi, and Haley are hanging out when Anna arrives with Yoake, the counselor. Jesus Christ. I had to know <laughs> so many fucking names for this. Mm -hmm. he, here was my trick with that. I ignored their names. Oh, well, yeah. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Very wise. Yep. I had to write shit in my notes. <laughs> yeah. So, but they're bringing along a professor here at the school who knows quite a bit about alien implant technology and hand-waving hypnotism bullshit. Oh, yeah. and, and he's got stubble. He does have stubble. He's a rebel. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He's sexy. He's the cool scientist. Yes. He's the scientist you want to bone. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. This is where the movie shows us its face tattoo, right? Because up until now, <laughs> yep. it's pretty boring. But this is where the movie was like, hey, just so you know, wink, pretty crazy. <laughs> Whoa, repressed memories. Whoa, oh, there's, there might be aliens. Whoa, it's probably the Grey. Yes, it happened yes. real quick. <laughs> right. Bang, bang, bang. It's the Greys. And, and, and what, one of the big problems that I had is that when the hypnotist uh, professor guy was talking to Nazumi, he really implanted the idea that it was aliens. Yes. He brought that up. 100%. <laughs> that was really shitty. He's like, hey, you're remembering aliens, right? Right. She <laughs> says, I, I'm not alone. And he says, is it a small thing about three feet tall? And she's like, yes, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> that's, that's the definition of leading questions, counselor. Yeah, so good. <laughs> John Edwards walks in the room. Okay, you're fucking faking this. Come on, man. <laughs> this is in their work of fiction. He implants the <laughs> repressed memory. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that's what I thought was going to happen at that point. But then we realized that it's probably true. Yeah. Although yeah. we never actually see gray aliens. No. We? I think every time they bring it up, somebody is immediately like, it's not the grays. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, it's a running bit where it's, somebody's like, it might be the grays this time. And they're like, it's not the fucking grays. <laughs> Stop it! It's the lupus to house is the exactly. grace to yeah. the universe yeah. part zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Per perfect analogy. Right. But, <laughs> but this is where she reveals her like repressed memory, which is that the aliens, right? The bad aliens, they were implanting a microchip in her. Sure. And then their ship hit something. Yes. Like a fucking DUI. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I really wish I could have been on the spaceship to see that scene when it happened. And so I said to her, why do we even have tentacles there if you're not going to use them? I, I, I'm with you, man. She's being unreasonable. Oh, God damn it. Seriously? We're doing brain surgery back here, guys. I know, I know. We hit something. Oh, you think? Do, 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 do you want me to get out and check? Or uh, I mean, should we? I, I, well, I feel like we should. I'm pretty sure uh, we erased this girl's sense of smell. Can you glue it? No, I can't glue it. Okay, everyone relax. Just just relax, okay? We're going to dump the girl back on Earth, and then we'll go to one of those self-car washes, and, and nobody needs to know about this. I, I mean, Mark, we I should... I said nobody needs to know. That's highly implied in the fucking script. Yes, that Absolutely. exact yeah. sequence of events. I also love, too, Yoak is like, Yep, there, there must be an implant that they didn't turn all the way on. And, and, and he's like, well, can't we just remove it? Yawaki says, no, it wouldn't even show up on a CAT scan or any other human method of checking to see if we're full of shit. It's still there no matter what the doctors think. The amazing thing about all of the happy science movies is that all of them include, but don't check on any of this, please. <laughs> yeah. I was listening to this at this point and the doctor hypnotist guy's voice was like, really familiar to me or so it's it's but not very familiar and so i looked it up do you know who that is who does this Ooh, voice no it's dylan mcdermott 
Really? really? Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Noted TV actor Dylan <laughs> McDermott. Wow. I'm right. Okay. Yeah, that was that was a little shocking to me. I was like, yes, that is someone whose voice is familiar to me, but not very. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I recognized the voice immediately. Oh, well, now I know why they drew him so fuckable, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it did. It did kind of look like Dylan McDermott. Now that I think about it, <laughs> I know that voice, but I also feel like I could buy it on Cameo. I'm going to do some googling. Is Dylan McDermott in the Happy Science Cult? I don't know. No. So, Ooh. fun backstory to this movie: they got a bunch of mainstream, mainstream. They got a bunch of relatively mainstream anime actors slash voice actors to do this movie who had no idea that it was associated with the cult. And then when the movie came out, everyone was like, "Hey, that's a giant cult. Did you know that?" And they were like, "I mean, anime is weird, people. We can't just be checking up to see if people think all of these animes are real." <laughs> that is a really good point. Yeah. I would, That's a really good point. I would say it's wrong of them to commit this kind of fraud, but they're a cult. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Kinda, this is the best fraud they commit, probably. Yeah. Somebody told Dylan, and he was like, oh, that's awful. I'm going to go hang out with Allison Mack real quick. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bye, guys. I'm not going to be involved with any of these cults over here. Uh-huh. That is disgusting behavior. <laughs> <laughs> I love also, by the way, at the end of this scene, we just cut over to like some monster that's watching him from a distance and he slams his fist against a wall and then we cut away as if the movie is saying, don't worry, eventually a thing will happen. There are things (laughs) eventually. They did try and comfort us a lot. They were like, look, we, uh, the movie was oftentimes like hedging its bet. Like, listen, guys, we know this is a lot. Yeah. We get it. (laughs) We're with you. And it happens multiple times throughout the movie where they're like, we're going to info dump you right now. And we're sorry. Oh, okay. This is a, I don't think they were sorry. No, they were. Our info dump. It really was. So, okay, so the next day, they're all going to creation research class, and this is, like, in a giant lecture hall with fucking lights and smoke machines and shit. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And and this is where Professor Dylan McDermott gives his lecture of, if you can't tell how many fingers are behind my back, it's aliens. (laughs) He's also shaved by this point. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, I barely even recognized him. I love to. They they hedged their bets. (laughs) So fucking much on that, right? Because they have to have Ray look up and then they he he looks at him and then we flash back to the scene that was immediately before this and then he goes, He's the same guy. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. Thank you. Appreciate that. They do not trust the audience. No. Yeah. No. But this speech is genuinely nonsense. My favorite quote from it is he goes, The golden ratio. Is that an accident? And I wrote in my notes, numbers are numbers an accident? I just, I I love how simplistic your understanding of math has to be to be awed by the golden ratio. Like, that's just what happens (laughs) when you add those numbers. It has to have, it has to make a little spiral. Think about it. It doesn't, oh, anyway. But, but, but. (laughs) Is that an accident? <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that you have rebutted that. You literally cannot even imagine a universe in which that would not be the case. But okay. Yeah. <laughs> he also says here that it's true. Scientists can't prove that aliens or gods or angels exist, but that doesn't mean they're not real. And I wrote in my notes, what does it mean then? <laughs> This was the uh, this was the beginnings of the point where I was like, okay, so we're going to get some strident, strident anti science from people who are obsessed with telling you that they love science. So yes, much. yeah, exactly. It's like, in the name of the cult. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in the be- right here is where you're like, oh, they're going to tell me that the most scientific thing of all is faith. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's exactly mm-hmm. the point of this stupid shit. And it's like, oh my god, I fucking hate you people. Let's do this. Come on, <laughs> yep. two more hours. He's like a true scientist, believes in all kinds of stupid, provably wrong bullshit. Yeah, just the, the, the just strongest. There's no proof. Doesn't mean you shouldn't believe. Yeah, the strongest scientist knows that the scientific method is kind of bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> It's about the science of your heart. It's jazz. Yeah, science that's what it is. It's, science, it's about jazz. the science you don't do. It. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, and of course, after that amazing lecture, Ray realizes that their big group project that the entire first third of this movie is focused on could be about UFOs. 
Wait, 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 wait. That's not entirely true. <laughs> he seems to decide that he wants to conquer the aliens. Yeah, yeah. Well, yes, a school yes. project. Right. Through a school project. <laughs> right. Right, right. You were you were really selling him short on that. <laughs> yeah. his, his goals his goals are perhaps the only thing I admired him for. He was straight away. Let's I, overthrow aliens. I can't prove they exist. I can't prove they're doing anything. It could be anemia, but let's take these aliens down. <laughs> let's go for it. Yeah. But I wanna kick them in the nuts with my school project right i desire to fist fight them <laughs> it did it did make me despair of first contact <laughs> yeah yeah we, we just got to make sure they hit ace game before they hit tyler yeah right right, right. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. I just, I wrote in my notes, like I say, he says, we'll expose the truth about aliens. I'm like, nothing good ever came from that sentence. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah. Oh, and then of course we have to see that the two, and I'm going to keep track of this for you guys. The two kids that went to the genius school on the bus in that scene where the other kids didn't get on the bus are watching them through the window henchmening. Wait, wait, are you talking about cram school? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> okay, just making sure. Don't go to cram school. <laughs> yeah, at, at that point when he when they've decided they're gonna fight the aliens yeah. and the those kids were there, I, I was like, ah, the senior class are aliens. <laughs> it's fun, <laughs> and they are. Yeah, and then we have this weird bit where we all learn that summer break means something different in Japan than it means in the U.S. Jordan, help me. What's happening? Jordan. Oh, I have no idea. God I never pay it. attention to... No, I, I pay attention to, like, baseball season. There you go. <laughs> I don't know if that... That usually happens all re, all year round, though, yeah. so I don't know about summer break. <laughs> so, <laughs> they really like baseball. It's an 11-month season they've got there, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, so here's the thing is that they're all talking about whether or not they're going to go home for summer vacation, which is, is like spring break for them, right? It, it's... it's clearly like a week or whatever. But when we hear summer vacation, we're thinking three months. We're like, they're going to stay in the fucking school for three months to do their UFO project. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, they have a year round school. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a regular thing around the around the world. In the United States, it's uh, unusual. Yes. Yeah, so we have this weird agrarian throwback yeah. Of bullshit. Yeah. To be fair, everyone needs a three month break from the American school. system. Yeah, hey, hey, don't even get me started on using a meter. So- Not going to happen. <laughs> All right. So, but then, okay. So the next day, though, they get with, I guess, Haley, Anna, and SK are also staying in school over summer break. So they head into town to do some research on that genius school. Wait, 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 wait. Before they do that, I have to point this out because this stuck out like a sore thumb. Yeah. Okay. They, they find out that the gals are staying over summer break as well. And then there's a weird shot out the window. And there's just somebody digging a hole. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. There was no explanation. There was for that. no reason. Nope. <laughs> no. Never comes back. Never no, matters. Just a big hole. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't like eventually push somebody into a big hole. No. no. <laughs> like in, Chekhov's rule. In the background of movies that are shot with people, sometimes something bizarre will be in the background. <laughs> yeah, but yes. they had to draw this. Shit. Someone drew it. Yeah. <laughs> we had to have done that oh, on purpose. Some angry animators like I'm gonna bury your ass when we're done with this. I'll draw it right <laughs> fucking here. This is me digging your goddamn grave, motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> I get, I get that. That's probably the janitor, and he comes back into play. But like, why is he digging a hole? That still doesn't ever like relate to anything. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there's some, some janitor foreshadowing there. <laughs> I love to. They go to town, and they're like, "All right, let's check for some clues on the genius school." But first, how about a little photo montage, huh? Because we're friends. Literally. Oh yeah. Yeah, I started getting some Bollywood vibes here. I was, I was like, this is gonna go well. It wasn't until the music number to uh, split the movie in half that I was like, oh, this is Bollywood. Yeah, We're right, going all the way. Taking a lot of notes. Straight up. Okay. Yeah. I wish more sci-fi horror films would do this, though. Right? Like, if the faculty had just had a shopping montage, I'd be into it. I'd be yeah, no, it. exactly. Exactly. Sometimes we have to be reminded that they're just people. So, okay. So, yeah. So, they get back to the school. And then we have, we cut to SK jerking off in the senior's bathroom again, I guess. When he overhears... Those very same guys talking about it being on at 2 a.m. behind the school. <laughs> right. And interestingly enough, Tyler ends up being the one that follows him. Yes. SK, that we, we, we watch SK hearing them, and then he comes out of the bathroom. Tyler comes out of the uh, stall next to him. He's like, no, no, I've got this scene, SK. <laughs> <laughs> SK's like, oh, I thought... 
Because it makes a lot more sense for this to be me and a thing that I know. Always... No, <laughs> I'm much easier to draw. You shouldn't have an afro. I'm going to be in the next scene. He does the same fucking thing to Haley later. Yeah, he should have. He should have been like, "Hey, how long have you been in that stall?" Yeah, right next to me. <laughs> you've been in there for a while, or <laughs> just a short period of time. I should. I should let you know. There's a hornet that uh, occupies <laughs> me, and it likes to touch my dick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was also wondering, like, do the seniors just have better bathrooms? Right. What was the deal with that? <laughs> yeah. Is it by year, like, the bathrooms are different? No, probably. I just, it's, weird. Yeah. it is weird that there's, like, a an age, like, I, I don't, is there an ID that you have to use? It's like, the corporate bathroom or something? I don't know. <laughs> so, okay, so that night, Tyler goes to spy on the bad guys, but just as he's about to follow him into the woods, the janitor shows up and just delays him for a few minutes by... Having boring conversation with him. Yep. He just got done digging those holes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't fall in any of the up. holes I just dug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, janitor out and about at two in the morning. <laughs> yes. Normal. Right. So, and then, okay, but thanks to the janitor, Tyler's lost their trail. So he decides to just randomly wander out into the woods in the middle of the night with his fingers crossed. Yeah. But luckily for him, he does get kidnapped by aliens just... Aliens who are really bad at using the tractor beam. <laughs> yeah, that was an embarrassing. I feel like that was embarrassing for everybody involved, mm -hmm. right? Like everybody, nobody felt good about that. Right. The aliens have got to be sitting up there going like, guys, it's light. We're using light. And he's a kid running <laughs> through the woods in the dark. We should be able to catch him. Here. <laughs> it's like the aliens let their little brother play for a second. All of a sudden, <laughs> Spider-Man's got really bad MS. You're just like, OK, come on. <laughs> Mom said you let me have a turn. So apparently they've got the tractor beam claw machine going or something like that. But they finally do get him. You know, he gets alien napped. And then now that we finally we've sat through 40 fucking minutes of boring ass nonsense and shit. Finally, our character gets taken aboard an alien spaceship and brought back the next day. We cut to the next day when he's already home and he's in bed. Yeah, I'm glad we didn't see any of this and that he can kind of sort of describe it while being interrupted in the next scene. <laughs> <laughs> it's an animation, guys. You could have just had this happen. What, did you not have the budget for all the gray that was required? <laughs> it's, the, uh, it's the motto of the happy science cult. Uh, tell, don't show. Yeah, 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 clearly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so next day, he Tyler shows up to work on their group project looking like Act 3 John Wick, right? <laughs> I have to bring up why, how did he get hurt? Great question, because he, he never reveals that, right? He's never like, oh, no. and then she punched me in both my cheeks simultaneously. <laughs> I, I, I legitimately thought that what we were supposed to draw was that he was literally dropped off of the... <laughs> he was just dropped out. Oh, okay. Like, what? You know, like while the, the UFO is still UFO moving. moving. They just dropped him out. Like he tucks and rolls <laughs> yeah, out of the yeah. UFO. <laughs> that's, what, that's, how I, that's how I got the idea that he got hurt. I was like, oh, well, they obviously just tossed him out when they were done. Oh, I was going so much easier on them. I was like, oh, he must have really beat himself up running through those woods or something. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so he tells him that he was abducted by aliens and... Was it the Grace? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't the fucking it's never guy. the Grace. It's not Lucas. <laughs> I will also point out that Ray immediately wants to fight the aliens again. He's like, oh, of course, I was abducted. I'll fucking kick those aliens in the dick. I wanted someone to be like, hey, Ray, uh, I know they're aliens and they're abducting. I need you to be medicated, man. Whatever this is. <laughs> is like, Let me you. at him. <laughs> Here's the real Josh Hartnett from the faculty. In, yeah, uh, yeah, in yeah, this exactly. movie. Yeah. Speaking my language, you beautiful man. <laughs> Speaking my beautiful, beautiful language. Yeah, but so, but Tyler apparently was kidnapped by different aliens, hot lady aliens. You don't know them; they're from the Pleiades. Uh, but they was they were here last summer. Yeah, but no, he literally says that he was he was kidnapped by beautiful blonde aliens that took him to the Pleiades. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I love one of them goes like. No, that's like four. There's that's too far away. They wouldn't have been able to get there. It's like, yeah, that's where the story falls apart. Really, totally. <laughs> yeah, that was my issue. That was my issue. Also, when he's telling the story about meeting this Pleiadian lady, and they show the Pleiadian lady, uh -huh. 
She has a Nazi eagle on her chest. Oh, she yeah. sure does. Oh, does she? she? Sure does. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, that she was, sure does. That was really upsetting. <laughs> oh, yeah. it, it's never discussed. Yeah. The Pleiadians are the good ones. No, and he pulls, he pulls the drawing out, and you're like, oh, that's a terrible drawing. And then it turns into the image of what it's supposed to be, and you're yeah. like, oh, he, that's a Nazi. Yeah. That's a Nazi ghost. This is, a, this is an Aryan <laughs> Nazi <laughs> alien. It is a blonde haired, blue eyed character from a fucking yeah. Japanese national. Cult. So yeah, that's yeah. probably not an accident at all. No, no, no it is not. Again, again, someone drew it. It's yeah. not, well, yeah, right. it's no, not, that's it not just not. the clothes that she had on or anything. Yes, yes. <laughs> they weren't like they weren't like. Okay, we've got this idea for an alien. You pick, <laughs> and then we'll be fine with whatever. <laughs> the animators, you just pick what you want the Pleiadian to look like, and we'll buy it. Yeah. <laughs> what if Wonder Woman was from Nazi Germany? Oh yeah, sounds great. Go ahead, <laughs> yeah, just draw it right. into the movie. There we go. Jesus, we won't check your work. That's when I knew we were in trouble. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is also my favorite hand waving away from the science moment in the movie because they're like, but that's so many light years away, and he's like. Oh, well, the secret to space travel that's faster than light. And they're like, boo, boring, move on. Tell us yep. <laughs> yeah, yep. no, exactly. But yeah, and then so just as you're thinking like, wow, I guess this is as crazy as this scene is going to get. Haley says, oh, oh, I almost forgot to mention this. I also got abducted last night by yet a third alien race. My alien race is monkeys in space suits. <laughs> yeah. My note here is, God, I wish I could have been there to watch Jordan's face. When she said, I also got abducted, but they were monkeys. My, my, my note is a monkey and then three exclamation points. <laughs> Very excited that that was how we went. That, that, that moment, the moment she was like, I got another, I got another alien race. I was like, Oh, we're coming hard and fast now. <laughs> then it turned into, it went from being like that prelude in fireworks where there's just one going off every five minutes to the grand finale in an instant. Fuck yeah. Boom, aliens, aliens, different <laughs> ones, new ones. These ones are from here. What are you talking about? It's not the fucking grave! <laughs> <laughs> so, very, very unnecessary to introduce so, monkey aliens. So into many. It. They yeah. never do anything. No, unrelated. The monkey aliens never come back. I kept, I was waiting the whole time for the monkey aliens to show up in a banana ship and just shoot the yes, fucking reptilian something. at the end or something. They never come back. It turns out it's Diddy Kong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Be awesome. Yeah, so, but we learn from Haley and from Tyler via the monkey aliens and the Nazi lady that the reptilian aliens are the bad guys and they are, have already infiltrated the American, Russian, and Chinese military. So the only thing that can save you is Japanese nationalism. <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, that makes sense. <laughs> that tracks. But multiple aliens have now, or multiple races of aliens, I should say, have now chimed in in the effort to save this Japanese prep school. Yep. Specifically the group project. Right. Yeah. This Team science right. Team project. Future. Team Future. Team Future. Team Future. Team Future. Team Future. Team Future. It's Team Future. It's Team Future. Their name is Team Future. <laughs> that was so dumb. And and that, that was like, oh, they're naming themselves Team Future. Isn't that cute? Later on, that becomes very upsetting to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Team Future. Uh, well, right. But the reason is so that all the bad guys can be against the future right exactly yeah, yeah. the thing the thing that they they just really hammered it on these kids so quickly and i know it seems obvious to us after a certain point but they just really go in like from zero to guess what reptilians are fucking everywhere they're your teachers they're your friends mm -hmm. they're the military it's like the they're movie the faculty everywhere. yeah it's insane <laughs> it was insane they just Helpful. dropped that knowledge they didn't try and, and they didn't explain like oh also aliens and like the universe is fine and you, we, you know, no, just reptilians are everywhere. Yep. You're fucked. And I have some real credibility problems with the source. And yeah. like, you know, we talk about this sometimes when like if the project Camelot stuff. Yes. The guy who's saying that the reptilians are, and the, uh, they're bad. Right. Is untrustworthy. He is himself bad. He's a murderer. Yeah. And so maybe they're good in this case. The Pleiadian lady's wearing a Nazi eagle. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> if she's saying that the reptilians are bad, I don't know if I trust that. Oh, yeah. Right. And then they start going into the Galactic Federation and they're saying all and these the things. Space that... Treaty. <laughs> but, but then the more you think about it, they're like, wait a second. 
they're just oppressing all of these planets under the guise of saying, oh, they wouldn't survive without us. Fuck you. Yeah. These Ooh. people are space Nazis. They yeah. are. They are. Well, okay, I'll tell you what. The opening gambit of this in movie's insanity is that space lizards have infiltrated our militaries and the only thing that can stop them is the fucking space Nazis. So before we dig any deeper, we're going to need to take ourselves another break, but we'll be back in a flash with even more of The Laws of the Universe, Part Zero. Ho, 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 let's see. Michael Marshall, nice. Cara Santa Maria, nice. Oh, Heath Enright, very naughty. Uh, excuse me, Santa. Well, hello, Twinkle Toes. Just working on my old naughty and nice list. How is work down at the factory? Uh, it's not great. Uh, the other workers and I were wondering if we could uh, have something other than candy to eat. But you're elves. Elves love candy. Well... Yeah, sure, but it's been like 1,500 years. I feel like we could all use a salad. Well, I'm sorry, Twinkle Toes. I don't have time to run to the grocery store and cook up a fancy meal. Well, why don't you just try HelloFresh? What's HelloFresh? They're America's number one meal kit. With HelloFresh, you get fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. Oh, I don't know, Twinkle Toes. I've got a lot of mouths to feed, and some of them are pretty picky. Well, HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every week, including vegetarian, calorie-smart, and gourmet options, providing plenty of variety. Gourmet, you say? Tell me more. Well, recipes like balsamic and fig beef tenderloin or pecan-crusted salmon make holiday meals feel special without the high cost of dining out or delivery. Or go for a cozy comfort food like chicken and sausage and sweet potato soup for a cold winter night. But fresh ingredients right to your door, that's got to cost Santa an arm and a leg, right? Nope. You can go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful14 and use code Awful14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. Free gifts? But that's my thing. Not anymore. Once again, just go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful14 and use code Awful14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. So what do you say, Santa? Oh, why not? We'll do it. Hooray! You have been looking a little peckish. Yeah, no, quite a few of us have scurvy, too. Sure, sure. Reptilians, to me. Yes, yes master. Yes. As you know, we have thwarted the Galactic Federation up until now by slowly insinuating ourselves with the militaries of several major world powers. Indeed, we have. But now, the time has come for our next move. We must destroy a high school science project. Sorry. Did you say high school science project? Yes, yes. Team Future is too close to exposing us to their entire private school. We must act fast. Sorry, sir. Yes, Rep. Faces. Wouldn't it be better to just... You know, ignore the high schoolers who are going to tell everyone at their school that giant shape-shifting lizards are attacking their planet. You, you know, you think so, uh, but no, uh, no, we really need to just get in there and like mess with their powerpoints, stuff mess like that. With their powerpoints. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, look, if there are no more questions, uh, let's go light the Hanukkah candles. I knew we were Jewish. Oh yeah, very, very Jewish. Uncomfortable. <laughs> and we're back for the break and so are all the kids from the Nazca Academy summer break is over apparently and it's time to start the big academic festival thing do you notice the name of the school is a little weird do you know why it's called Nazca is it because of the Nazca lines yeah it's obviously a very subtle yes uh, subtle. subtle is what to I would the, describe to the as. Nazca lines <laughs> yeah that's so. trouble <laughs> So here's one of those like the culturally unfamiliar Japanese things. This is some kind of festival that has both math and cheerleaders. I don't. <laughs> I, have, I have nowhere to. Jordan, Jordan, tell us if this is in every anime. <laughs> everything has cheerleaders. Oh, everything. Okay. I'm. Not, I mean, and, and you think it's. You think I'm joking when I say everything. I'm saying everything. I'm saying if you go to a Scholastic Bowl, there are cheerleaders. I'm saying if you are watching somebody cross a small stream, but really well, <laughs> there are cheerleaders there. All right. There are cheerleaders. All right. The end. All right. <laughs> Jordan, do podcasters get cheerleaders? In I'll move, no! man. I'll fucking move. It wasn't the fucking gray. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs>
All right, but it's about time for them to do their big presentation. I was thinking to myself, like, wow, they're pulling the trigger on this already. I kind of figured this was Act 3 shit. But no, it's time for them to do their presentation. But SK shows up with some terrible news. Their presentation has gone missing. Hmm. Yeah. I was worried about what the presentation would have been if it hadn't gotten <laughs> stolen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like they had much at this point. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just picturing some kind of, like, scrape from a david ike book for the jpegs he used <laughs> yeah I mean, what the gal's gonna get up there and be like i got kidnapped by a monkey alien yeah exactly <laughs> i got kidnapped by a hot lady alien with big boobs <laughs> i you guys fully, get an a <laughs> i fully expected this is where i thought it was gonna go because this made the most sense to me they were gonna do the bill and ted thing their presentation got stolen Guess what? They have a connect with all the actual aliens. So then during their presentation, you know, like Abraham Lincoln. Steps oh, yeah, up there you go. Four yes. score, yeah. you know, like he was good. They were going to do the whole thing. That made perfect. The sense monkey to me. alien shows up to give part of the speech. Yeah, right. Right. Absolutely. That's how you do it. Nazi alien lady refuses to take any questions about the eagle on her chest. Yeah, yeah that would have been that would have been problematic. <laughs> You guys want to know about Pallades or not? Not really. You know that was a thing here, right? It's crazy that that would be a coincidence. It's about culture. Okay. <laughs> Heritage, not a Palladian Heritage. culture. Heritage. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, so but yeah, but so they find out their presentations are missing. Ray is pretty sure that the aliens ate their homework, but fuck it, they're gonna do it live, right? Oh yeah. So he goes in and he starts winging it, and he starts giving this speech, and I'm thinking to myself, imagine. The type of PowerPoint that they would have to have for this not to be a disaster, right? Like, what goddamn slides did they put together there? Yeah, like, the, him winging it seems like exactly what they would have been doing anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. It's very weird. It's just missing visual aids of the monkey aliens. <laughs> and also the idea that, like, oh, I'm sure that aliens took our work. It, it sounds silly, but it's correct. Yeah, yeah. it is. It is. <laughs> yeah. He is right. Yeah. Aliens took their shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also, not to get like too deep into the lore here, but that means that the reptilians who came here to invade the species and take over military had a subgroup that was like, I need you to go into that high school dorm room and delete a PowerPoint. <laughs> He's got a backup. Make sure you get the backup, too. <laughs> yeah, I believe it was called, uh, uh, pretty sure it was called Yoink Team Six. Yeah, 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 yeah. The strike force. It comprised entirely of the senior class. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Just doing dive rolls around this kid's bedroom. Room. Stop it, man. You're making us look stupid. Just delete the kids. PowerPoint. Yeah. So he's up there going like, and there's monkey aliens and there's Nazi lady aliens. And the, and the audience is acting like, you know, you should. In that oh, situation. There was, there was some all time great, like recorded several years after the original script was read. It just, this doesn't sound true. <laughs> just a bunch of those throwaway yeah. voice actor lines. Strong punch up work. Uh, yeah. yeah. To get those ADR lines. Yeah. The heckling in this room is my erotic audio. I don't need a girl <laughs> so running her fingers funny. over tinfoil. I just need this audio every night before I go to sleep. You're ridiculous. <laughs> this report is not good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Show us some evidence. Yes. So good. Oh, the, the people demanding evidence are always the bad guys in the uh, happy science oh, movies. the best the best so the principal comes up on stage and is like this is some dumb fucking shit man you are in trouble but just then a ufo abducts ray and the principal right off the fucking stage surprise mm. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see that shit coming did you that's why we winged this proposition <laughs> yeah i guess they kind of did do the bill and ted thing actually no, <laughs> yeah. i thought that that was like the most foolish move that the aliens could make but then I'd forgotten that they can do that whole, like, put them back exactly at the same time they yeah. left thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's cheating. Right. Yeah. I, I was disappointed because I'm like, oh, my God, look, there's so much narrative <laughs> tension. They just disappeared. This whole school is now going to know that aliens are. No. <laughs> no, 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 not important. Red herring. <laughs> yeah, right. So but we cut to Ray and the principal. They're hovering above the school now. in I think Carl Sagan's ship of the imagination. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Or like a Victorian lady's fancy hat. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> As a fidget spinner. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that takes them to a bigger UFO where they are greeted by, and again, correct me if I'm wrong here, a superhero goat man. Mm. Yeah. 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 That's how I would describe him. I have him as a goat man with racially troubling facial hair. Okay. All right. Mm. Yep. <laughs> he also, I, I, 
look, I, I know we're trying to make a bunch of different animals into aliens. Um, <laughs> I think it's suspicious. Is this the meeting? Is this the meeting that they <laughs> were yeah. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, guys. Yeah. Let's not go goat. Um, <laughs> yep. There are, there are connotations with uh, Baphomet <laughs> and things like that. And he's supposed to be the good guy. Yes. Yeah. He's hanging out with the Nazi Pleiadians. Yes. I think. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I yep. think honestly, they're the bad guys. <laughs> and I, he's like, he's like, welcome to my spaceship. We are now at the far side of the moon. I went, I calculated all of this, right? I, they, it, they've been on the ship for a minute and 38 seconds. They are going 9 million miles an hour right now. <laughs> oh God. How good would it be if it, it cuts to him? He starts to introduce himself. It cuts back to them and the flesh has just rent from their bones. <laughs> Oh shit, you guys aren't good with G-forces. Oh, you don't All have right. rock veins? Fuck, what was I thinking? Let's grab someone else. Let's grab another one. <laughs> what about that girl we were fucking around with when we hit that cow on 95? Can we get her? This was, this was the part of the movie. This was the info dump that made me kind of like suspicious of what it is they feel like they need to explain science wise and what it is they don't like all of a sudden <laughs> all of a sudden they're like listen we've got to let you know that there is a relay that allows us to communicate across you got to know that otherwise it would just be silly that we could get a message all the way there this would be ridiculous yeah. yeah yeah totally i can't i can't allow you to think that we would just hand wave away that <laughs> of course we can travel faster than light that's no big deal obviously obviously we don't need to worry about that whole big deal right there like, they just choose random shit. Can I talk about the most upsetting part of this scene to me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know he talks about the dark side of the moon and the reptilians and the Federation. There's a ghost squirrel at one point and then no one acknowledges it. And I thought about it for the rest of the movie. It's really upsetting. A ghost squirrel appears. The goat's like, Steven, get the fuck out of here. I have guess. <laughs> he, he vanishes and the movie never talks about it. <laughs> oh, you're right. I completely blacked that out. Oh, the janitor was probably digging a hole for the goddamn ghost, the ghost squirrel. For that squirrel's body. Okay. <laughs> I, if you looked throughout, if you do a find for throughout my notes, ghost squirrel comes up more than like space. <laughs> So, yeah, but so he's doing this huge long, the super goat is doing this huge long info dump about there's how there's a galactic federation that's protecting Earth, but the reptilians are building their own moon base and they'd attack us if it wasn't for the damn galactic treaty. And then he has to explain how you can communicate and switch bodies. It's He's explaining drifting from Pacific Rim at a certain point, right? Yeah, yeah. I also love, and this is where he lays out that basically the Galactic Federation of Good Aliens has a not touching, can't get mad rule mm -hmm. so that like, as long as the reptilians are infiltrating the Chinese military, which is already evil to begin with, there's nothing we can do. Yes. Hey man, rules is rules. Yep. <laughs> Exactly, but the Galactic Federation has special plans for Ray and his middle school group project. Possibly <laughs> high school. Yeah, Possibly okay. High school. I was like, yeah, yeah, we'll go high school. So. <laughs> but just then, the reptilians attack him, and they have to send him back to Earth. Yeah, he like like his shitty roommate came home. Mm -hmm. If you've ever had a terrible roommate, who, like <laughs> wanders in, and he's like, "Hey, man, I need a place to put all this frozen fish." You're like, "Oh, you gotta." I'm sorry, you gotta go. The reptilians are here. And gotta get out. You gotta get out. I gotta. I gotta have a whisper fight with that ghost squirrel in the next room. So I'm gonna ask you guys to head back to your school. So yeah, so we cut back to the lecture hall, and and of course they've bamfed them back into place exactly at the same time that they left, apparently. Which which avoids the trouble yeah. of the the auditorium of kids <laughs> yeah. knowing about aliens. Yeah, I would ask, there would be a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which we will eventually just tell them about later in the movie anyway. Yeah. So, okay. So that night, the Scooby gang is all hanging out at SK's masturbation closet or whatever. And Ray is going like, man, I really should have taken pictures or something. I just, I didn't even think I had my phone with me the whole time. Did not think to get some video of the space alien. So funny. But that's when he realizes that he does have some evidence the alien, before they sent him away, gave him a moon rock. Dun, it's a dun, moon dun. rock! Only NASA and museums have these! Yeah! Sure. <laughs> if, if only they could get that moon rock in front of the right audience, everyone would know that super goat aliens and Nazi lady aliens exist. Yeah. That was his thrust, was it not? Yep. That the rock only was enough proof 
to corroborate his entire story. Exactly. Yeah, right. The movie will never at any point even pretend that it wouldn't have been. Well, it, it's it's this is the thread that starts to untangle everything. I think yeah. that's what uh, Ray is thinking. <laughs> right. Like, he's like, how did I get a move oh, wrong? Oh, and you were there? And you were there? <laughs> and you were there? <laughs> He will challenge someone to come up with an alternative explanation yes. for how he yeah. got this moon rock. Right. So he's like, hey, we should go. We should take this to the principal. He'll probably believe me. After all, he was also abducted by aliens this afternoon. <laughs> yeah. With me. Yeah. So, yeah. So they go see the principal. There's a point where the principal's talking about a bunch of shit and there's a voiceover. It's like Ray's voiceover. And he goes. I don't understand what he's talking about. And I thought for a second that like my thoughts had bled into the movie. <laughs> that was not the case though. <laughs> so they get the principal, they get Yoaka and they're like, come back, check out our moon rock. It proves that super goat aliens exist. But unfortunately the moon rock is missing. Dun, dun. And they make a weird jump here, but the movie's about this for a solid 48 seconds. So we should talk about it. The moon rock is missing, and so they all simultaneously decide, guys, I think one of us being mind controlled by the reptilians, right? That's the only possible explanation for this moon rock being. Here's missing. here's the problem I have here. Mm. Okay, so when the moon rock disappears, they are on their way to explain to the principal, and the principal goes on this long monologue mm -hmm. where he's like, common sense has no meaning unless I tell people that aliens are real yes mm -hmm. and he's he's got this long like it doesn't matter if i have proof i'll believe whatever i believe whenever i want to believe it for any reason if i heard somebody saying stuff like that i'd be like they're going through something yeah yeah yeah, totally, <laughs> yeah. Totally. <It's laughs> tough. yeah. this is a transcript from a family court where someone loses visitation <laughs> right, rights. right right but, but this is before he's told about the moon rock as proof so mm -hmm. un un asked for he's like listen you don't even need to show me that fucking moon rock. <laughs> I'm in. I'm fucking in. And my life has no meaning unless I say I'm in right, right. now. That's how far he fucking went. Yeah. Right. Well, because ultimately the movie has to land on, but even if there isn't a moon rock, you should totally still believe us, though, right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 So then the moon rock goes away and Haley hey. melts down yeah well, <laughs> they blame Haley's sister yeah, right yeah. Nazuki because right. but, but I mean that's a logical thing to do yeah. if you don't know that the senior class are aliens <laughs> she has an alien implant in her brain she went to cram school right. yeah <laughs> cram school <laughs> don't go to cram school yeah. <laughs> so I mean it's a sensible conclusion to come yeah. to but, yeah. and she even comes to the conclusion that I must have done it yeah. right <laughs> Well, that's the fucked up thing is that that Tyler says, hey, guys, you know, the only people that knew where the moon rock was, was like the five of us. There must be a rat. And Nazuki is like, it's probably me. I, you know, I do have a alien <laughs> microchip in my head. And she runs off and everyone looks at Tyler and they're like, how dare you, Tyler? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so Anna and, and Haley run off because they're mad at Tyler. Tyler looks at Ray and he goes, wow, we sure are at our lowest point right now, huh? In the whole story. And he's like, yep, but I will Music number. fight on alone if I must. Yes. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, out of fucking nowhere, there's a whole goddamn music video. I oh, thought wow. it was over. I thought it was actually that was over. I thought that was the end credits uh -huh. and that it was one of those that YouTube videos. have torn them apart. Yeah, that it was one of those YouTube videos <laughs> <laughs> that just played it again. I thought it's like, oh, this is the end of the first episode uh -huh. or something right. like that. It ends on a cliffhanger of their friendships being torn apart. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Just, and then you want to see the zero. next episode. Oh, it would have been nice. I yeah. feel so bad for you guys now. That's sad. Man. That is a sad fucking story. <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> this music number fascinated me because first of all you've got this band that's on the quad mm -hmm. and that's fun but then the other it was thing not fun for me that the lyrics <laughs> i had to write them down because <laughs> oh good you would they did not make sense None. yeah thematically for what's going on in the i guess may maybe if you're super generous because it's about love and stuff right you know like it, it's not a love story really it, vaguely but it feels like but that's the thing it feels like they both wrote this song and at the same time shoehorned it in mm -hmm. to the movie right 
Yeah. They could have written a song yes. just more directly for the movie. <laughs> or written a movie. Like, they wrote this song and they were like, I fucking love this song and we got to cram it in here somewhere. Yeah. Or they couldn't have written the movie in such a way that the song made sense. They had two yeah, ways exactly. to go here and they chose neither of them. Neither. So, so here's how it starts. I've lost something. It's related to my sweet memory. <laughs> Moonrock. Moonrock. It's yeah. done by the wind, transient wind. My eternal enemy, it will lead to death. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay, I know sometimes shit gets lost in translation. I will bet a million dollars that's just as stupid in Japanese. <laughs> word for word. <laughs> well, and then the, the end of the song is so never worry, but don't forget me. Don't forget my love. It's still shining in the bottom of the stream. <laughs> The stream? The stream was the thing that blew me Jesus away. Jesus Christ, yeah. that got dark. <laughs> but like a stream is not very deep. Yeah. I wrote down, here's, here's the worst part of my notes. Why is there a music video immediately followed? This song sucks in the bottom of the stream. That was as good as it got for me. <laughs> don't worry. That was the best I could do for this. Don't worry, my love. My uh, my love is in the creek. The bottom of the creek. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that is just a lazy suicide right there. I'm oh, just going to lay right here in this stream. <laughs> so bad. Stop rocking me. I breathe every time you do. Oh. <laughs> and then we cut to... The place we already were, right? We're at the school, and then we have a music video, and then it gives us a fucking title card that says Nazca Academy, and we're like, yeah, we know. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is Nazca University. Oh, that's right. This that's, is different. Yeah, uh -huh. This is a step up. Yeah. This is like up in your game here. Mm -hmm. Now and we're it, taking it to the to It's the a top. fucking pyramid. <laughs> yeah, it is a literal pyramid, yeah. That's true. But but so here's the thing, though. <laughs> Nothing happens at Nazca University. It, it gives us the title cards. Nazca University, we see Yoake and like three other scientists doing some science shit. Wow. And then we cut back to Nazca Academy where all the kids are <laughs> sitting around. You see them with weird kind of science stuff. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, no no fucking beakers or anything like that here. Yeah. Nope. But then but of course, rather than focus in on that, we have to go to the far more interesting story about the conflict between Tyler and Haley over whether he says he's sorry enough. <laughs> <laughs> this movie, and no matter what crazy shit it would throw at you, it would always throw some boring teen drama at you next to make you regret watching it in the first place. Oh man. Yeah, when the like when it's those info dumps that are being done that are uh, just never ending, I'm like, something else. And then it'll go to the teen drama, but like, not this. Info something dump. else. Something, other something, this. something, something else. Mm, I miss Goat Man. More info dumps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At least the info dumps are crazy, right? Like at least we have mm. that. <laughs> yeah, but so this is where they all like try to even figure out what the hell their conflict is about at this point or something. And and it's resolved apparently too because we never go back to the fact that there was a conflict between them, right? No, they're fine now. Mm -hmm. They worked it out. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Tyler said he was sorry, and then they just moved on. I guess. Oh, okay. Sure. Well, that was it. Yeah. That's a strong relationship being built. We're yeah, watching no. a good. No, I can't. I can't tell it. I can't tell it. Nope. I got nothing. That was a noble effort. Yeah, right. right <laughs> a noble exactly. effort, right, right. if you will. Way to try to put the good spin on it there. All right. So, but the next day, the gang gets an important message from Yoake. That, so they rush to the university pyramid to see him. But also, his place at the university pyramid looks a lot like that masturbation closet. Oh, yeah. Sure does. Yeah. I thought that's where he was. Right. It's animation, <laughs> guys. You didn't have to use the same set. Right. Why are you reusing this? It's not like the other Christian <laughs> movies we watch where, like, David Dayar White's basement is the set. Like, we have. <sighs> <sighs> so, but yeah, so Yawaka and his team have built a spiritual alien telephone. I was, worried. I was worried about that. Yep. Yep. They did do that. Mm -hmm. That is what he said. He seemed to have made it fairly quick, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know? And luckily, it fits exactly the right amount of teenagers. I really right. wanted him to have like one less seat, and they were like, ooh, SK, you'll chill here, right? We all kind of couple up other than you, though. You're the fifth <laughs> wheel of our team, very clearly. Or even better, SK, you got to jerk your way out of this. It's you alone, buddy. You well, versus the world. We'll kind of learn later that it's important that there are five of them. 
because they combine their powers and form a pentagram. That's yep. true. Nothing, yeah. Yep. Nothing weird about your <laughs> Nazi ghost lady, your goat alien king forming a pentagram to save the universe. Nothing yeah. creepy about that. Nothing. Yeah. At so all. I think he could have predicted they would need five. Right. So maybe, yeah. They need the pentagram. Well, and we find out power. later on. Spoiler alert. He's a fucking alien. Yeah. Sort oh, of. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, okay. But don't snitch. Don't snitch. <laughs> right. He's an alien. But don't tell nobody. We've been here the whole time. Was he a Pleiadian, you think? Yeah, I believe he was a Pleiadian. He okay. was pretty yeah. hot. I mean, you know, that's their thing. True. And he was a racist. Well, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's their other yeah. thing. <laughs> so, yeah. So, but he's like, we built this alien telephone and humanity is going to talk to aliens for the very first time. Very first contact between us. We figured we would uh, get a random group of high school friends to do it. Yeah. You guys down for a little holographic alien Skype? And they're like, sure. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. Absolutely. My note on this was, I believe his speech boiled down to, we want to experiment on children. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Your brains specifically. <laughs> and, and the kids were like, I can't believe we weren't already offering for us you to use this experiment. How did we luck out like this? We're, it's honestly, it's rude of us to not have invited ourselves to be experimented upon. <laughs> yeah, we're the fools here. We asked the principal who would be least missed at the school, and everyone agreed it was you. That's so so uh, <laughs> hop along. Also, point of order. This isn't a telephone. They teleport. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It is a teleport. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. It's not uh, uh, like, hey, we could communicate. They they left Earth. Right. Yes. No. He sells us a communication device, but yeah, they straight up teleport the fuck out of there. Yeah. So yeah. So they all sit down in their various chairs and they summon. They use the powers of their friendship to summon a spiritual pyramid so their souls can rise through the ceiling and wound up oh, yeah. in a UFO. Is what happened in the movie. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, pentagrams very important. Number five, very important. Yes, all of this, yes. very important. Mm -hmm. Combining powers, very important. Mm -hmm. And this is where we're going to meet the giant hornet alien Woody Allen. It's a walk -in. character. Yes. it is a walk in. It is a yeah! walk. Yeah, giant bee with anxiety. <laughs> I don't know if you. Guys, I don't know if you guys know this, but Jordan doesn't know anything about walk ins. He is so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a reference to our show. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to episode 455, True Believers, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but this is where they reveal the whole walk-in thing, right? This, right? this is where the hornet goes like, uh, yeah, so occasionally I inhabit your body, SK. Sorry about that. I need to I need to say this line out loud because it's going to stay with... This will be the last thing out of my lips before I die. <laughs> but SK, SK says, have you been squishing your soul down inside of my body without permission? <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's going to be your rosebud. That is my rosebud. Yeah. Have you been squishing your soul down inside of my body without my permission? Yeah. To which the bug says, yes. And he says, that's not cool. And then the bug says, I know. Exactly like that. Exactly like that. The bug says it like this. I know. Yeah. Yep. And SK, his complaint is like, I've been violated. Yeah. And yeah. He's right. Everybody's agreed. Yeah. 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 And yeah. the bug is like, look. I know. Like, I, what, what, what are you talking about? You're the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then SK puts the giant hornet alien into a headlock. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. They have to separate them from a fist fight. You got to teach them a lesson. Okay. <laughs> I thought kicking the aliens in the balls was Ray's thing, but no, now SK's doing well, it. Apparently, it's SK's thing. You damn bug. <laughs> <laughs> it's SK Milan. He's the bug whisperer. That's what he does. <laughs> so the alien, the Hornet's like, if you let me out of this chokehold, I'll take you to the Pleiades. And they're like, oh, where the hot Nazis are? And he's like, no, no, different, <laughs> different Pleiadian no, we're star. Going. We're going. Was that a bit on purpose? Because it was pretty funny to me when he was like, oh, are we going to the hot lady Pleiades? And they're like, no, a different one. And then they just leave on. <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> I thought that was very funny. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if you could tell, but as a gi giant bee, I'm coded kind of Jewish, and they do not like me on that Pleiades. Let's just say that. So, uh, no, we're going to be going to the Pleiades 3, which is a lot more eh, bee-friendly, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I noticed around this point that these kids were adapting shockingly fast to meeting new aliens. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, 
did not seem to be surprised by anything. Yeah. He's not even batting an eye at this point. No, I guess after the monkey aliens reveal themselves, everything else is going to just... You talked to a big giant ram. All right, fine. Sure. You didn't know there were bugs. That could walk into your soul. And were invisible at times. Exactly. <laughs> yes. And we're really awkward about it. Oh, yeah. The fucking hornet turns invisible at one point when he gets nervous oh, yeah. for no fucking reason. And that never comes back. Yeah. Oh. No, nope, just a real creepy bug. Yep. I believe I wrote down in specific, I'm going to kill this bug. <laughs> <laughs> you and SK should team up. Yeah, right? yeah. The, the bug does magic? Question mark. I'm going to kill this bug. <laughs> so now in terms of like the good aliens that we've met, we have a Baphomet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have a Pleiadian who has a Nazi tattoo exactly. on her chest. Yeah. That's very prominently <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. uh, shown. Displayed. We have a bug that goes into people's bug. bodies. Yeah. It's a rain raping it's a murder bug. hornet. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. I don't know if I think these are the good team. I, I am team reptilian all the way at this point. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> They're giving everybody like perfect memory and shit, making school easy on them. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. Man. They're running cram school. So, <laughs> so far, all they've done is give people technology and photographic memory. Yeah. And the good guys have just raped their way through this fucking school. <laughs> well, and and if you think about it, Nazuki's all fucked up, as we're going to learn, because one of these aliens rammed into the reptilians while they were trying to do brain surgery on her. <laughs> mm -hmm. so. She would just be fine like the other seniors. Right. Yeah. If, yeah. It would have been great. Yeah. Yeah, these these aliens are bad. Yeah. Anyways, this is the basis for a great religion, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the Hornet flies them to a space college. Oh my god! Oh, he was like, "Look, I'm going to bring you inside to show you space college, but I need to dress you like NYU students at a Ren fair." So. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> oh boy! That was intense. I did enjoy that. They take a three minute <laughs> tour of space college that never reflects it. Like there's no point to this at all in the larger story. We never come back to it or whatever. Mm. The Hornets just like you guys want to check out uh, space college. And they're like, well, I mean, if we're if we're all the way out here. Sure. <laughs> I really wanted them to like wander in on a bunch of trust fund reptilians jerking <laughs> off in a coffin. Just like, yeah, oh, I'm sorry. The the IGV League system is really a problem here in space, too. <laughs> I, I think that the space scene or the space college scene kind of does inform stuff a little bit mm -hmm. in that like there's a condescension that's shown to Earth from everybody else. Yeah. yeah. Like because the, the college course was just like they're like, ah, on Earth they have different nations and, <laughs> and religions. Look at these bunch of dumb yeah. dumbs. <laughs> that was what the college was doing. Yeah. Look about at these Earth. morons. All right, no, that's that's believable. I can imagine that that's what space college does. It no, the explanation for Space rude. College was was kind of the insidious. Elites. It was so insidious. It was like, what will happen is the elites come from all over the universe where they're educated, and then they'll be sent back to be spiritual leaders where they're from. Well, and you would like, assume that it's like, well, then Jesus must have gone to this school, exactly. right? I mean, like, yeah. this is the implication. Yeah, the whole, this is, this is Space God's space priest training school. Right, mm. but more importantly, the leader of this cult went to this school. Right. Do we know that? Yes. I mean, okay, because that's definitely, I would see that being implied, but. Yeah, that's, that's the claim. Wow. Yeah, yeah that we, makes do sense. Do we have his transcripts? <laughs> <laughs> What's his He'll TV? sue you yeah. if they ever get out. He will sue Space College. <laughs> <laughs> Would you have any extracurriculars? Because they did say that they learn about sports. No, that's true. Yeah. They do learn about sports. <laughs> oh my god! Space sports. Fucking hate this thing. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, you don't want to watch a bunch of spiritually enlightened, <laughs> effete aliens with vastly different biologies oh my god. trying to make it through a fucking badminton tournament. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess the the cloud of mist people are still zero for five because <laughs> they have no physical forms. Can I ask you why you guys just decided it's a hornet? <laughs> <laughs> that, that alien. I, I feel like a hornet is the funniest word. We could go with wasp or something or whatever. But I, I, I have him as anxiety be in my notes. Okay, I felt uh, like now, it might we're have been a moth. To, now we're getting into real comedy theory. <laughs> <laughs> is is a K funnier because it exactly makes pickle spread. is yes, funny? Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Poop is funnier than shit, and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Episode three thirty of Gam is just the Sunshine Boys from this forward, like a word for word performance. <laughs> All right. And so the, the bee is like, oh, I'm sorry. I crashed the ship on the way in. I can't get you back to Earth. And they're like, well, this, that's going to be problematic. He's like, no, nah, it turns out there's a big giant 
fidget spinner spaceship right there. So. No, you could you could take that ninja star home. Oh, okay. oh, all right. Well, in that case, and here's the thing: believe it or not, every remaining scene in this movie is going to be at least twice as insane as the previous scene. So yes, that's yeah. true. Yeah. We're going to need a break to prepare ourselves. But first, let me give Act Three the hard sell. What the hell have Dan and Jordan got themselves into? Is this what they've been training for this whole time? Or is this actually slightly less insane now that I think about it than their normal fare? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the batshit conclusion of The Laws of the Universe, Part Zero. Hey, Eli, I'm going to the gym. You want to come? <laughs> to the gym? Me? Noah, I am a smart person. Smart people don't go to the gym. We sit in fine leather chairs and die quietly at the age of 36. Eli, you don't have to be a gym rat to exercise, and taking care of your body is the smart thing to do. Psh, and do what? Squat jacks? Reverse bench Heimlichs? Hammer what? strike bod crunches? No. Nope. Please. I am a poet. I contain no such multitudes. That doesn't... Look, if you're not sure where to start, why don't you try FitBod? What's FitBod? FitBod's innovative algorithm learns about your goals and training abilities and crafts a personalized training regimen that's unique to you. Ooh, that sounds kind of smart, actually. It is. The path to achieving your best look is different for everybody. FitBod creates a program based on your unique goals, experience, and equipment. So no ladder, squat, press, jack required? No, nothing like that. I don't know, Noah. I spend my money on things like fine leather-bound books. Can I really afford FitBod? Oh, okay, one, I saw you buy $300 worth of bubble gum last week because you wanted the full story of Bazooka Joe. And two, FitBod is only $12.99 a month or $79.99 a year. And if you sign up right now, you'll get 25% off your membership. Damn, that sounds smart. Kick the new year off right and get started with your customized fitness plan from FitBod. Get 25% off your membership when you sign up at fitbod.me slash gam. That's 25% off your membership at fitbod.me slash gam. All right, Noah, I'm in. Gymnasium, here I come. So uh, what is the story of Bazooka Joe anyway? Turns out he did 9-11. Uh, dude, this was such a good ad. What? He did? No, he didn't. He did. <laughs> Reptilians. <laughs> so there, there's just no easy way to say this. Um, I had a meeting with HR, and apparently there have been some complaints about the current assignment to take over Earth. Seems like some of you feel that sabotaging high school science projects and friendships is beneath you. <laughs> yeah, I would kind of feel that way. Okay, all right, well, for the record, I'll have you know that this is very important. For instance, Reptilius. Did you know that by passing Stacy that note, you could be sabotaging a future intergalactic ambassador? I could. You sure could. Or by stealing their moon rock, we prevented the first study of UFOs done between the U.S. and Japan. Wow. Well, sir, if I could ask, what was the plan behind telling Sasuke that Haru doesn't want to take her to the dance? Oh, it was, um... Well, see, okay, so the thing on that Was one... Was it that you want to take her to the dance? Yeah. Okay. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to rejoin the team teleporting aboard that space shuriken from earlier... I would have asked at this point if there was a non-tractor beam way of getting on vehicles. <laughs> I would have, like, so you know if it had been like you, me, and Heath or whatever, we would have had a pool going as to what kind of animal this alien was going to be. Right, exactly. At this point. A, a beaver walks out and we're like, ah, oh, fuck, 20 bucks, 20 bucks. <laughs> I was, sure it's going to be aquatic. <laughs> it's literally the Keebler elves. It's an emu. <laughs> <laughs> that would be terrifying. Emu alien. Yeah, yeah that right? would be terrifying. They're so quick. Yeah. <laughs> and angry. <laughs> mm. And lies. <laughs> and sexual. Get their beaks into small mm. spaces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> sexual. You beat me to it. All right. So, but there's no aliens at all. They are actually, instead, they're being greeted telepathically by their own voices. Boo, mm. contact, boo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That was a double whammy of, that's no moon, it's a space station to uh, contact real quick. Yeah. <laughs> that happened fast. Well, yeah, because they're like, you know, they're like, oh, so you're going to take us back to Earth? And they're like, uh, we got a couple of stops to make along the way. Yeah. They're like, did yeah. we just Uber pool gonna, this shit? It's going to be a fucking while. <laughs> yeah. Strap in, assholes. <laughs> you're going to be in space for a fucking day. Sorry. 
I know you're supposed to head to Earth, but do you mind if we swing by my ex's house to cry in her driveway for a little bit? <laughs> right? You picked the wrong spaceship. So, yes. It was either it was either that or wait for the bug to fix this shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I mean, you got to do what you got to do. And then, and so they, they, they roll up on this one planet in Vega, or near Vega, I guess, and it is totally not the Death Star. It looks completely different. <laughs> totally is not a plasma ball. It looks completely different. Apparently, it changes with Anna's heart. Yeah. Right? Right. Yeah, you can do anything. Sure. Oh, okay. Your heart. I buy it. You got to be pure of heart <laughs> yeah. to change the spaceship. Right? Yeah, I think this I, movie had beaten me down enough at this point. That I'm like, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If they showed me her changing a tire, I'd have been like, yeah, that sounds right. about right. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you got to change movie. a tire cool. on your cool, space cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, no, you got to do, do it. Yeah. At this point, my watching of this movie was just, at what point can I speed up YouTube and still say I've watched this movie? <laughs> <laughs> Well, and then suddenly they're, they're all standing around watching the planet, and then suddenly they're on the cloudy white plane, and baby Anna is there to talk to them. Mm -hmm. Surprise! It's me when you were younger. But she doesn't recognize her younger self somehow. Never met you. Which is weird. I feel like I would recognize me. <laughs> I've seen me in pictures. No, her family didn't have mirrors till she was 22. Come oh, on. Okay. Yeah. That's unfair. That's just classism. Ray uh, uh, no, recognized her. Yeah. <laughs> Ray she didn't recognize her herself. Either. Right. She doesn't have mirrors. She didn't weird. have mirrors growing up. Yeah, there you go. Weird. She says, and, and of course, this is where they explain that anything is possible when you believe whatever the fuck you want to believe. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, we skipped over the science part of science fiction yeah. real quick. Yeah. We skipped that part over. Anything is what you believe it to be. Mm. Oh, okay. Well, I love the jingly keys here, too, right? Because they're like, wait a minute, that doesn't actually make sense. And then when she, and then she drops a thing and everything turns into waterfalls and a giant ice statue. She's like, what were you saying? And he's like, I don't even remember. What was I saying? I don't uh, know. It's okay. I'm pretty high. Yeah, no, no we, were, we, were, we were hoping you were pretty high at this point in the yeah. movie. I mean, they, these kept coming hard and fast, too. Like, all of a sudden, we're learning about past lives. Lives, yep. And then, well, before we get to that, like yeah. the, the with the waterfall when that happened, right. the, all I could think is like, man, they blew their budget on that. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah. <laughs> it was a really good waterfall. Yeah, these effects are different than the rest of the movie. Yes, yes. pretty ambitious, kaleidoscopic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then we got the fucking baby Ray shows up and takes him to space mm -hmm. Egypt, and then they're on a subway that takes them to Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven, where they meet Tyler and baby Haley. I'm writing my notes like. No, listener, it's neither your fault nor ours that you're not following this shit. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're being, like, lectured by their baby selves yeah. about, like, how they have to remember who they are and stuff. It's I like, think at one point I was an aristocrat in my past life. You were! Yeah. I'm an aristocrat, you fucking yes. what? <laughs> yes, it was like... I it laughed fucking... really hard at this. Yeah, Ice so Gay's the funny. only one who doesn't have a baby version. <laughs> nope. He has a regal. <laughs> yeah. He has a fancy <laughs> version. You were an aristocrat in a past life. Yeah. Whatever you want is true. I'm Willy Wonka. <laughs> yeah, it, was it was glaring that there were four children and then him as an adult. <laughs> yes, as right. Their, so funny. As their spirit being. Ask Gay, what were you doing hanging out with all these kids? What? Nothing. What were you Nothing. doing? <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't even know Josh Duggar. Never fucking met him. Jelaine Maxwell walks into the frame and I'm your no Jelaine later. later. We'll talk to you <laughs> no, later. Get out of here. <laughs> oh shit, that's who the squirrel was. The ghost squirrel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> oh, I beat you by a second day. <laughs> but yeah, so they explain that reincarnation is real and that people on Earth don't believe in spirits and ghosts enough, and that's why Earth sucks. That's why there's war and shit, because we're not all their religion. <laughs> yeah. there's so, so many great lines from these stupid kids that one of my favorite lines is just uh to be honest i never believed in myself at all yes <laughs> <laughs> it's just they're all having these personal revelations and they're such sad fucking terrible mm -hmm. shit if you've ever done coke for the first time <laughs> yes <laughs> with yes. people who've never done coke before <laughs> <I'm good. laughs> Oh man, somebody said I'm gonna build the first UFO on yes. Earth. Yep. <laughs> oh, you're, you're talking about their aspirational yeah. Uh, yeah. montage. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so so yeah, so so they're they're on their little weird acid trip animation and Baby Anna is just like, Well, this part of the movie's over and they're like, Is it really? And then they're back on the spaceship and they all apparently have to like go one by one telling us what they've learned about themselves <laughs> yep. during yep. that. And uh Anna's 
is that she's like, I want to make movies yes. that touch people. Yeah. I was just thinking, that's this the movie. writer. This Talk, movie. Yeah, he's this talking movie. to himself. <laughs> yes. Yep. I want Absolutely. to be the person who writes this movie and that's specifically. Why I thought that she was the central character. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> At a point of like, Well, and then oh. Ask is like, we could do cartoons, you and me together. Right. <laughs> yeah. I want to make this movie. Yes. This movie. <laughs> We want to make religious films that express the ideas that change the world. Well, Haley we want wants to, see. to study religion. And and she such. wants to be yeah. a priest, and they all want to essentially make the movie we are watching right now. Well, the three of them, at yes, least. Because exactly. well, right. one of them wants to make spaceships. Right. Yeah, Tyler wants, wants to, to make, make spaceships. Movie. And then Ray steps up. I love this so much. Ray steps up, and I wrote in my notes, it'd be fucking hilarious if he just steps up and he's like, I actually don't, I don't know what I want to do. <laughs> and he does. That's what he fucking does. <laughs> he does. <laughs> Yeah. That is great. He does. The oh, movie doesn't so know good. it's a bit, but it's a really good <laughs> bit. It's a really <laughs> solid comedic bit for him for them yeah. all to be like, I'm going to explore the universe and Ray to be like, I, I think I'm maybe finance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I yeah. wish I could have gone first. <laughs> I'm going to do pre-law. We'll <laughs> yeah. see what happens. Just keep my options open. I'll start a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> is there a community college for self-revelation? Yes. Or what do I... What do I do for that? That's um, <laughs> uh, right out back of the uh, space college. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. it's over yeah. there in Pleiades 3. <laughs> no hot chicks on that college. No. Oh. <laughs> but still Nazis. Yes, Nazis. Yeah, well, yeah there's yes, definitely Nazis. Nazis. Nazis at all space Nazis colleges. Nazis and suspicious bugs. Yeah. <laughs> And okay, so but then they they all have their little revelation, then they reappear at fucking Professor Yoaki's weird tea party or whatever. And apparently, like this, the teleportation device was supposed to allow them to see through the kids' eyes the whole time, but because they went four hundred and forty light years away, it's going to take four hundred and forty years for them to get all that information back. Unfortunately, you <laughs> didn't think about that. Told you about science fiction. <laughs> <laughs> See, we know science. It's it's almost like the response that he should have had was like, ah, oh, fuck, why did we even do that? I, I <laughs> yeah, really, if you think about it, I, I should have known. I knew <laughs> that there was going to be light. <laughs> Would you guys uh, stop having experiences that literally only happen to you and you're the only ones who have any proof of it? It's very hard for my job. I didn't. I we didn't. brought this moon rock back 440 <laughs> years from now. <laughs> But you kind of learn that this professor dude is kind of trolling because he's a fucking alien. He is an right. Alien. Yeah, no, he knows. Yeah, yeah. I enjoy I enjoy that revelation at the end, like recontextualizing his all of his dialogue <laughs> up to this point. It's like you're just being a dick to children. Yeah. He's trying to like <laughs> theoretically help them prove the yeah, existence of aliens while being a fucking but alien. You just lift your fucking mask yeah. off. I want to do it ah, ah, dialectically. <laughs> and, but he's like, it's a good thing that you got back what you did. All the reptilian kids are gathering everybody in the quad for, uh, you know, the the grand finale of the movie. And they're like, oh, fuck, we wouldn't want to miss the grand finale of the movie. You should have known it was the grand finale coming because it's cloudy. Yeah. It's yeah. really cloudy. <laughs> yeah. I believe I believe somebody even says at one point, the genius school is on the move. Yes. Which I, yes. I could not have loved more as a, <laughs> the genius school is on the move. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. So yeah, so the reptiles, they've got Nazuki and they're going to do their big demonstration where they're going to turn her all the way into a photographic memory reptilian alien genius, right? And can I just say that this fucking dance, whatever this does, involves summoning a very evil and spiky spaceship. I think if you're going to summon a very evil and spiky spaceship, you don't lead with the benefits of photographic memory. <laughs> <laughs> and in theory, wouldn't finishing the surgery kind of help her? Yeah. I, they, again, yeah, right. Like, we have not established the reptiles <laughs> or the beggars. The only thing they do is have a spiky ship. <laughs> it looks evil as hell. The right. No, it looks, looks like something looks... Bowser would show up in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, does, it does have the reality of all cult kind of beliefs that... When you boil it down, somebody is describing a problem like my surgery wasn't finished and you, mm. and the cult solution is like, yeah, that's because they're evil. So we're going to cut your Achilles tendon. Yeah, well, <laughs> right, right. This, this, this cult, I don't know if you guys were going to get into this, but they like during COVID have been giving spiritual vaccines. Get out yep. of here. Yep. Yeah, of course yeah. they have. Yeah. So yeah. that might be more well, accurate than you think. Anything is what you believe is belief that you make happen with your heart believing in it. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> That is to their quote the old song. 
<laughs> Your vaccine is at the bottom of the creek. Yeah. <laughs> bottom of the creek. <laughs> So, yeah, and, and of course, so Haley's like, oh, they've got my sister. I need to save her. And Tyler's like, no, 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 this is like the bathroom thing. I've got this. I'm actually the guy, <laughs> so I will do this. And so he's now going to save the day with his I've learned something here today speech. Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> I wrote in my notes, life can be hard, but don't give in to the reptilians. That classic chestnut. <laughs> <laughs> Guys. Guys, everybody, remember what it's like to be in school and how great it is. Remember, sports day. Yeah. <laughs> and other good things about school. That was it. Yeah, no, Haley jumps in and starts telling him about the power of school spirit. Oh, yeah. And is telling him about the power of believing yourself. The, the principal has also learned something here today. They all take turns with this for fucking 10 minutes. I thought the principal's monologue was a little bit like, come on, dude, it's about the kids, not the principal. Yeah, yeah. He, was, he, was, yeah. he was like, this is, this is actually about me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's trying to make it about him. Man. Dude, you're like ninth on the you call are sheet. Way you low. are so not yeah, important. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nobody and, gives a shit about the principal. And you hate that, right? Because there's always that weird moment at a kid presentation where an adult gets up and makes it about them. And so it's just like totally. a little bit cringy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is the science fair where we're watching the kid's dad, his project. Right. Exactly. Yeah, That's yeah, what exactly. we're doing. Right. Yeah. And then the kids summon Captain Satan Planet, right? Yeah. yeah. They all stand in a circle and a big pentagram shows up between them and flies up into Bowser's spaceship. Out loud, I screamed when our powers combined. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't stop myself. I was expecting the uh, song from Sonic Adventure 2 Battle to start. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I was going through. I was like, okay, which one's fire? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Yeah, okay. right, right. Who's heart? Nobody's heart. Is SK heart? SK, SK, SK must be heart. SK can't be heart. heart. Yeah. yeah. Is, I think he's heart. Is, well, I mean, if that kid in Captain Planet jerked off a lot, too, I guess we understand what heart really is now. <laughs> yeah. You didn't see those episodes? I didn't see those. <laughs> oh, oh, that's right. Just, yeah, the I, late I those seasons were fucking weird. <laughs> that was fanfic? <laughs> just Google Captain America jerking off. I promise you will get a result. <laughs> it'll, yeah, Cap no, Captain it'll get Planet a result. we're going for, but really do both while you're there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'll, make a, I'll make a compromise and we'll do a Chris Pine getting... Oh, never mind. <laughs> All right, so it, so then a good guy spaceship shows up, right? The bad guy spaceship gets knocked out, and and when I say good guy, I I'm talking about a Nazi here. Maybe I should change my nomenclature. The Nazi, <laughs> but she brought the goat with her. Yes, yeah, super right. goat yep. Nazi lady are there. The demon goat, yeah, <laughs> Nazi yeah. lady. Yeah. yeah, they got a spiritual magnetic field. Yeah, yeah, right. They said the power of the kids' friendship has created a force field that'll allow us to, for once, penetrate the galactic treaty or whatever you know well that's what's so crazy is they're like finally we were brought here and the kids are like oh great you're gonna stop the reptilians and they're like no no we're just gonna watch but um we're here <laughs> we're watching yeah yeah they had some really random convenient ass rules there to toss out at the end just like hey mm -hmm. oh no 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 oh, we really want to help clause b i didn't tell you guys about subclause b it doesn't we're not allowed to wait even they hey listen do. we can't interfere with this kind of situation what we can do is abduct a bunch of children and their principal yeah. send them on a weird journey through space and time give them a bunch of obvious things that they should have recognized like in primary school or whatever and then tell them to solve the problem on their own right yeah, yeah. the nazi lady had the best line i think probably for me of the whole movie which was the galactic federation wants to thank team future <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. She's just got yeah, like a, is good. A, a laser printed certificate that she hands to them. <laughs> that's good. This is the best we can do. Sorry. Yeah, we're going to we're going to what was it? We're going to create the unity of science and spirituality that will save the universe. And it's like, oh, you mean you mean no science. then? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Science. Right. Exactly. Oh. You mean You're your talking stupid about zero science cult. And just as they're about to, like, I don't know, enter into this binding agreement on behalf of all of humanity or whatever a voice comes over the pa and he's like not so fast and it turns out the janitor was secretly a reptilian this whole time dun, dun, dun. and he would have gotten away with it <laughs> <laughs> if it weren't for these literal meddling, meddling kids. kids he even pulls off his mask at this point oh yeah see again <laughs> we get 
there's foreshadowing, right? You know, like he was out there at two in the morning. He's digging holes guess, right. for no reason. The, yeah. Uh-huh. The digging holes doesn't make sense. <laughs> Lizards no. dig holes. Do they? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Space ones do. Space mm. ones. I also, I don't want to body shame the reptilian. Wow. <laughs> wow. That is not how you start a conversation oh. about reptilians. Sounds like you're about to body shame <laughs> yeah, reptilians. Yeah, that's brutal. Yeah. But when he reveals his true form, it's not exactly exactly terrifying no right? is that body no. shaming i think that's a compliment there's a real bosnikian uh gut going on yeah there. i had sort <laughs> of that's a body Matthew shaming. broderick godzilla <laughs> going on there so and, and because this movie can't just be regular amounts of crazy at any point as soon as he reveals himself to be a reptilian he has to go off on some monologue about how his reptilian offshoot has no affiliation whatsoever with american reptilians totally different group just the absolute Point. best pointless <laughs> just the absolute best speech I have ever heard. Pointless lore. I swear I to God. So much. I swear to God, it is the best oh, thing I ever It was like a heard. Warhammer cut scene. It's like, what I the am fuck? number one! <laughs> I am number one! The evil man, who is also a lizard, mm. literally screamed out, I am number one. It was the yes. best. It was the best. Don't you dare <laughs> imply that I'm involved with the same <laughs> alien species that whoa. are in America. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Listen, dick. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you make that assumption? Have you seen how many types of breakfast cereal those assholes have? Are you saying have? all reptiles? Reptilians look alike. There is a great diversity among the reptilians. I will have you know. Starts to make a gesture for like a nose. He's like, those reptilians are more of a like, a, oy vey, reptilian. I, I don't want to get into it. I just, I'm not. Oh boy, I'm not really. That's the point. So, oh man. Yeah. So he starts yelling about how they need to bow before him. He is the reptilian overlord, and they're like, I don't think we have to bow before you. That's not how this movie ends. And that's when he uses his space bat signal to summon a giant space sphincter to suck them into the dark side universe. It's the dark side universe! My note is, ah, there's a dark side universe. (laughs) (laughs) As as if this is totally normal. Did we skip over over the most important line of the entire movie? Is that where he's yelling about Dahar? No. uh, (laughs) (laughs) Whenever Whenever the evil reptilian screams, I am aligned with the Chinese military. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's actually that. That happens right there at the Dark Side Universe. There, you okay. nailed it. Your timing was excellent. Yeah, that's sort of his goodbye shout out to them because that's the best line I've ever heard in any villain speech. Just yeah. and it's a non sequitur. It's not like I'm nope. going to call the Chinese nope. military. I'm not going to get help from them. It's, it's almost like he's just. Really excited about it. <laughs> yes, it's like he, it's like he closed the deal a couple days ago, and he hadn't had the chance to tell anybody yet. So it was time, you know. <laughs> or when, it, like, when a NASCAR driver takes on a really big sponsorship, and he's trying yes, to organically yes. work it into the interview after I the race. Aligned with Tide Pod, <laughs> <laughs> just like the fresh taste of Seven Up. <laughs> Also, did I miss it? He called down like the dreaded uh, messenger or whatever. Yeah, the space sphincter, Dahar, the space sphincter. Yeah. yeah. Wait, so the, the the sphincter itself was Dahar? Yeah. Is that what it was? I think the messenger <laughs> okay. of the dark side universe. I don't know, man. Don't ask me to unravel this shit. <laughs> All right, I, I should. I, that, that, that was unfair of me. All right. So, but then they suddenly they all the kids teleport into a town. And they're they're actually in the middle of their town. That they're at the genius school, cram school, cram school, cram school. Cram school. Cram school. Don't go to cram school. <laughs> and just then, time stops, and all the pedestrians turn into reptilians. Right. <laughs> but that's okay nope. because Ray turns into a stripy werewolf. <laughs> okay, all right. And then he, he apologizes <laughs> for turning into a werewolf. Well, he turns into a werewolf. <laughs> Arm first, right? For at first, it's just his fist is in his in his right arm. Yep. That's a, a werewolf. Right. And for a second, I was like, "Oh, SK's got nothing on this guy." <laughs> <laughs> but then he apologizes and he turns into the giant statue that we saw when we were in the waterfall ice world thing. Hello, call back. <laughs> I know. I I mean, but what what was missed is right before this is. They're explaining the dark side universe. Obviously. Were they? Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> okay. they're explaining how it's a threat. It's okay. going to destroy the whole earth. I think you know that if you hear dark side universe. No, no, no. no of yeah. course. Of course. They say <laughs> it's going to, here's the thing though. They, they say it's going to destroy the whole earth. And I think it's SK who says, not the whole earth. <laughs> Some of it would be fine. Even Guam? <laughs> I, I, I just, it's such a 
a whispered line, like he's saying it to himself, <laughs> like an aside, like not even even New York, like. <laughs> Oh man! And then Even and then cram school when when <laughs> Ray transforms into a Super Saiyan werewolf, which is totally not a Super Saiyan uh, mm-hmm. copyright totally rule thing, but it plays over that voiceover speech of his like when you find out what your true potential is, you yeah. can do anything. And it's like, wait, so you're telling me the whole time his true potential was werewolf? Was yeah, werewolf that was the true yeah. potential. werewolf mm-hmm. barbarian? Yes, yeah. that exactly. was not foreshadowed at <laughs> but all. Apparently, only in the dark side universe. I yeah. thought he was going to be really good at making films or whatever. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, he wants <laughs> to beat up the aliens. That's yeah. right. He's been talking about it the whole that's time. True. Right. That's true. That's true. Right. To be clear. That's not a very great real world skill, right? Like it's, it, he's not going to be in an interview later at a tech company and be like, "Well, I can turn into a stripy werewolf." I don't know if that's a tech company, a Silicon Valley tech company would see a man turn into a werewolf and be like, "We can monetize the shit out of yeah, that." Yeah, that's true. You probably, probably find a way to make a few bucks on that. So, spoiler alert: he ends up fighting like a bunch of these reptiles, and yeah, then he's too great much for him. He falls off a roof. Not great, and he gets saved by a fucking dragon. Of course, saved by a fat dragon. Yep. And this pissed me the fuck off. <laughs> the dr- Cause the dragon turns out to be their teacher. Yeah, the angry yeah, teacher. The Deus Ex Dragona. Who said don't go to cram school. Don't yes. go to cram school. <laughs> right. So he was the dragon. But why couldn't Tyler have been the dragon? He wants to make UFOs. He wants to fly. Because he's a super saiyan, he's not a dragon. That's a completely oh, no, different no, thing. No, because no, the other one's no, trans- no, no, yeah. transformed. No, no, it's a reformed reptilian who has to defeat the reptilian. No, no, no. Yeah. I needed the other kids to transform. Uh, right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That would be and they should have all had Super Saiyan powers. Also, yeah, that's true. Up to this point, the the animation in this has actually been stellar, right? The the, the animation really has been good. Very good. Mm. And then this dragon shows up. Not good. And it's like they promised that Larry got to make a thing too, right? Yeah. That for whatever reason, the animation on this dragon is Fucking terrible. It's real derpy. Again, I think they blew their budget on the waterfall. Okay. Yeah, something. <laughs> that might have been it. Yeah. They used up all the green colored pencils. <laughs> and so Larry is just like scraping by with the nub. When the it, dragon like looks back at Ray, yeah, yeah. <laughs> looked so terrible. If you've ever seen in the 80s, they made a rotoscoped version of uh, an animated version of Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship mm-hmm. of the Ring. Yeah. That was rotoscoped. Yeah. And then they also had one of the Hobbit and mm-hmm. Smaug the dragon looks exactly the same. You're right. And that's from 50 years yes. ago, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Also, when there was a dragon, I just thought like, ah, oh, dragons. All right. <laughs> they're in the, they're in play. They're in play. Yeah. Right. Dragons yeah. But they're they, in play, guys. The, the dragon turns, like picks him up and then sets him down and says, yeah, I was, I've been a dragon the whole time. I'm your mean teacher, by the way, from earlier. I, but I've been a dragon this whole time. And they're like, oh, great. I guess you can help us fight these reptilians. He's like, no, uh, no, no, no. no. I just- what you need to do to escape is to believe in the God of light. <laughs> I, I could not have been happier with that. That's some Game of Thrones stuff. I really wanted him to just <laughs> vanish and be like, see you later, knuckle fuckers. Believe in the God of light. <laughs> I, I wish I remembered more of this part, but this, this section of my my notes is literally just me whenever the dragon shows up me screaming mr takamine no! <laughs> and then and then three lines that just go what the fuck what the fuck oh fuck me <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is probably yellow heaven <laughs> yes yeah so yeah they do the fucking they, they all need to harness the light within them yeah i guess is what they say gotta and so then they do the heart pentagram spell enough and, and create a bunch of light that runs off the reptilians. Right. And then they escape from hell. And then yeah. they get to talk to God. Right. Yeah. Yes. And God asks them if Earth is worth all the trouble. Yeah. And I am very glad I was not the one that was asked this right? question. Let me tell you right now. Where, where are we? This must be the kingdom of the God of light. Feels like a weird guess, Dan. Yeah, uh, you you feel like a weird guess. Tell me, is the Earth worth saving? Uh, ooh, uh, Eli, you want to take this one? No, no. You know what? You guys got this. You you got it. What, man, pizza is real good. Yes, love pizza. Uh, delish. But man, is is it worth saving? Ah, that is. I mean. I'm going to need you to define a lot about what is there for yep. me. Mm-hmm. Uh, n- no. Yep. Got to say no. I'm going to go with no. Oh, okay then. 
there was one line in the explaining why we should save the earth speech mm. that really resonated with me. Oh, that's great. And that was one kid saying, I, I want to say it was Tyler. He just goes, uh, I can't explain why I love the earth. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, man, I get it. <laughs> I get it. I get it too. You know, I, I, I'm still here. I think what he was really saying is like, I don't know why I'm continuing to live. <laughs> and that Jesus resonated Christ. with me. <laughs> like on a deep level. Tyler sure. gets it. Yeah. 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 I, I think it's a preposterous question for some <laughs> deity to ask. Is the earth worth saving? I would be offended by the question. Ask your fucking goat guy yeah. if right? the earth is worth saving. Yeah. I live here. Yeah, I'm obviously by. Yeah, oh, just... is your house worth saving? Yeah, right. Yeah. Right, exactly. It's exactly. like everyone tries to defend their hometown's pizza, right? They're like, no, no, no. <laughs> St. Louis style you pizza. You gotta though. go to Luminati's. <laughs> That's the one. So, yeah, but no, it turns out they're all big Earth fans. So God decides not to let the Earth get sucked into the <laughs> dark side universe. Mm -hmm. What a great time for a villain reveal of one of the kids just be like, you know what? Nah, pass, mm -hmm. pass, <laughs> blow it up. Don't give a shit. Well, I love to Ray says, yes, we all love the Earth and we want you to save the Earth, even if it means sacrificing our lives. And I wanted all the other kids to start backing away from him at that point. It's like, well, hold on. Even, a if, hey, maybe, <laughs> even if it means sacrificing her life, even if it means giving her up to the dark side universe, we will give anything, including her specifically, to the dark side universe. Why don't you take her first, see if that's enough human sacrifice? And then <laughs> not the whole her. And then we can take her sister. Her sister's here. <laughs> so, okay. So they, they go back uh, to the school now. I guess God has saved the earth or whatever. And Professor Yoake sure is proud of them. Mm. They did a great job. And, and at this point, we're, of course, we're just like, yeah, roll credits, man. But this movie just picks a random five threads to tie off at this point. No, 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 no. They didn't tie off threads. They started new threads. That's true, yeah. They picked five yep. new threads to start that were unrelated and unnecessary. You're right. They were completely new threads. There's the reformed reptilian <laughs> yeah, thread. I didn't need to know. He could have just been a fucking dragon. I would have been fine. <laughs> Professor Yaoki being an alien thread. I didn't yep. care. Nope. I didn't need to know he was an alien. It Certainly didn't change not. anything for me. It just turns him into an asshole retroactively. They didn't defeat the janitor. He just ran away. The janitor's yep. fine. Yeah. <laughs> He's still aligned with the Chinese military. That's true. That could be a problem. <laughs> That's an issue going forward. They are trying to wrap up the plot and the bad janitor lizard is still heckling them. Yes. And his yes. ship comes by and sucks him up like he has to have an HR yeah. meeting with them. Yeah. Well, and then we see the, the, the bad guy students, the seniors that have been like, you know, outside of the bathroom stall, SK was in the whole time. And they're like, wow, what were we thinking going to cram school? We should have listened oh. to Mr. Takamine. Get that, kids. Education is bad. Yeah, yeah. listen to the dragon. <laughs> Don't go to cram school. <laughs> Your janitor's a dragon. Follow him. <laughs> he didn't go to cram school. And and then just in case, you know, we, I guess they felt that there was still a little bit more to wrap up. So we cut over to Super Goat and Space Nazi Lady. And they're like, they're heading out. They're like, all right, well, I guess our work here is done. And 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 they're like, well, that you know, is we didn't. an all time great. Did not do anything. Yep. Yes. Yet still said our work yeah. here is yes, done. Yes, that exactly. is an all time, like top five of all time having done nothing. <laughs> nothing. And then left all. with it. Our work here is done. Debatably, they didn't even get the project done. No. no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For creation class. <laughs> I wanted one of the kids to be like, were you guys... Were you guys chewing gum during that? Oh, no, it's just a little, we were a little not free. So, good job. Our work here is done. Oh, God, she oh, goes, man. I wonder if this movie was an analogy for a super goat. It's like, no, it's fucking real. All of it's fucking real. <laughs> so they leave. They've got rainbow exhaust because they're good guys. And then fireworks start going off because apparently they ended with a time that was at a one, three, or a six, I have no fucking idea what these fireworks were about. If you're gonna end a movie, you end it like Return of the Jedi, end of story. <laughs> Every yeah. single movie should end like Return of the Jedi. There should be Ewoks hitting Stormtrooper helmets. That's it. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's an immutable law of movies. Oh, and by the way, did you guys stick around for the mid credit scene? Hell yeah. Hell yeah, you didn't? <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't no, know I... there was a mid credit oh, scene. Oh, there's a mid credit this scene. This is what MCU level mid -credit shit, guys. Scene. Uh, Samuel L. Jackson shows up. <laughs> I was going to say, 
<laughs> That's why I didn't stick around. I was like, well, there's no way they're going to make this more movie. <laughs> uh, uh, you should have learned by this point. Well, no, right. there's, a, right. there's a mid credit scene where the Chinese military gets a call from the janitor and they're like, what? yeah, no, we're allied. We're allied, just so everybody knows. <laughs> no, no, no. No. That's not what it was. It was somebody got a call from the president of the United States. Yep. Oh, was that who that was? Yeah. Yes. Oh, and he's like, interesting. And he says, not the good, I've been meaning to talk to him. And that's oh. the end of the minute. It has something to do with demons. Sure. Yeah. The demons did their job or something like that. And then he's got to talk to the president of the United right. States. Interesting. All right. Well, no, that tracks. Obviously, so obviously, look, there are a lot of dangling threads in this story. So to close things off, I have a quick question for you guys. Which one do you most hope that they flesh out when we all get back together for the sequel that we will definitely all watch? <laughs> oh, who wins the eating contests? Like overall, that's what I. Oh, want okay, to all right, interesting, interesting. Over what? Like what? But look, if we're forty and forty-one, okay. Like out of how many is the match? Right, yeah. A, when is it all over? I think it ends at yeah. the end of the semester. Maybe there's a at the end of the semester. Ugh, yeah, <laughs> disgusting. I, the thread, the thread I would like to follow is how long it takes for everyone to wise up that the good guys are evil. <laughs> yeah, sure, <laughs> fair. The very obvious signs that the good guys are they are aligned back. with the United States military. <laughs> 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 I think the thread I would like closed is whoever composed the music for this movie needs to be stopped. <laughs> it was it was like it was like the Thomas Kincaid of music. You Ooh. know, it was that so fucking boilerplate shit like uh, oh it's like what you the would be pianist of light. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely mm-hmm. so awful it made me furious. So uh- Whatever needs to be taken, whatever steps need to be taken to stop that guy. I don't know exactly who it was, but in the credits, they're listed as Ms. Music. That sounds right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Oh, do you mean it was the Miz? But yeah, now the wrestler. <laughs> the wrestler, the Miz, <laughs> yeah. playing his music. He's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Dan Jordan, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. It was a lot of movie to get through. I can't, I can't believe you made it. So if you don't mind, can you remind our listeners that are, you know, too highfalutin to just check the show notes where they can go to find uh, more from you guys? Yeah, you can uh, find us at uh, knowledgefight.com is our website. Indeed. Uh, we're also on Twitter. It's at knowledge underscore fight and at go to bed Jordan. Yeah. And, and thanks for having us. And, and even if it, it was incredibly painful and stupid, uh, the movie was awful. But I did end it thinking like, I'll probably watch the next one. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I can't wait to capitalize on that. <laughs> it's at least ambitious enough to be weird. At yeah. Times. Yeah. Do you know what I ended it thinking? Ooh. I ended up thinking, have you been squishing your soul <laughs> down inside of my body without permission? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what, that's going to do it for our review of the laws of the universe part zero. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to I'll give you something to come back for next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, as we were asking our patrons for recommendations for our December bonus episode, a gem came up so beautiful, so exquisite that we had no choice but to tear up our schedule and watch it immediately. We'll be doing the anti-Michael Moore comedy about the real meaning of patriotism and American Carol. And if that's not enough to make you excited about this, go look up the goddamn cast for this oh, one. It's, it's exquisite. <gasps> so... With that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 330 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Dan and Jordan for hanging out with us today, and a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and thereby earn only access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scaling Alias, Citation, D&D D- Minus, and The Skeptocrat, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres, Tim Robson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Raz Thought and the Drafts on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath and Wright, Neil Abbas, and No Illusions promise to work harder or another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. SK and the Hornet discovered Cloaca stuff and took their relationship to the next level. Don't go to cram school.
And we're we're not uh, masters of brevity. Yeah, right. right. No, no worries. No worries. I mentioned that to Eli. I was like, do you sure you want these guys on for the two hour? Uh, we could do a, there's still a lot of 90 minute shit we got. Uh, but, uh, but luckily, Perhaps nothing at all happens for the first third of this movie. So we should right. be okay. Oh, you think I don't have thoughts about the, <laughs> the boring yeah. part of this? I was going to say, it was really interesting that you guys didn't want to talk for about this two hour long thing and you just wanted to listen to Dan and I argue about the first 25 minutes of the movie. <laughs> what are these choices about? Who goes to cram school? <laughs> All right, here we go. <clears throat> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.